two grown men are roaming the woods when they come across a creature that's making some very guttural warning noises. Suddenly, something wrapped in baggy robes lunges straight at them. As far as I can tell, only one of them makes it to the car, and then, I don't think it ends well. No other information on this video is available. If you're thinking of taking your motorbike down a dark, mainly deserted road at night, you'd better be ready for what comes next. Published to YouTube by Mumbiker Nikhail. To YouTube in December of 2014, another strange sighting was spotted while riding on a cold night. The uploader writes, I was passing by Airy Colony after midnight, and I would like to share the scary incident which took place. He notes in the video that the area is known for its ghost stories and scary people who lurk nearby. Nikhail says he wasn't sure if what he saw was a thief or a ghost, but whatever it was, it was scary. Thieves and ghosts aren't the only scary things about Airy Colony. Located in India's Sanjay Gandhi National Park, Wikipedia warns against traveling. The deciduous forest between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. As there are many feral pigs, stray dogs, and even leopards in the thick vegetation along the lonely roads, Worse, life takings are not uncommon in the area. Neither are occult practices. Ghost stories are widely circulated, with many claiming that spirits have tried to hitch rides in the night in this area. So yeah, why not take a ride down it? Though it is late, vehicles pass Nikhail by as he rides down the dark road. There are even people standing on the shoulder at some points. As he continues driving, darkness envelopes until he sees a man walking strangely in the middle of the road. He cries out as he almost collides with the man. But when he turns around, no one is there at all. He said he turned out of curiosity, but then realized the guy could be a thief, though he didn't see him anywhere in the darkness. So he sped off to live another day, and he says he's never returning to the area again after midnight. Would you? Based on what Wikipedia said, it's not a good idea. Exploration Unknown is a Knoxville-based urban exploration channel run by a man named John Turner. First appearing on YouTube in 2016, he dedicates his time to venturing into creepy abandoned locations from derelict home to former orphanages and asylums. His choice of location will often have a gruesome true story behind them, including the takings of life and other horrible events. Back in November 2017, John, along with friends James and Tim, returned to the abandoned Glendale Orphanage they previously explored. This time, their goal was to conduct the infamous 3 a.m. challenge. In short, 3 a.m. is considered the witching hour. The perfect time for hunting ghosts. Almost right off the bat at the video start, John and the others have split up when a wooden board is seen falling on its own from behind a doorway. John goes to investigate, and much to his shock and slight bemusement, it turns out it was just James playing a joke on them. This appears to be in James's nature as he does so again when he slams the metal door shut. Scaring John so badly, he accidentally stops recording. Jokes aside, Tim soon begins to feel lightheaded after the trio go to the second floor and therefore decides to head outside for some air. Meanwhile, James and John continue to investigate the second floor, finding the normal things you would expect in an abandoned building graffiti, specks of dust, etc. When they descend the stairs back to the first floor, they are shocked to find Tim collapsed on the floor, out cold. Down in the basement. I hope I got reception down there. Tim? Dude, you okay? Tim. Tim, dude. Tim, Tim. Bro, what are you doing? You okay, man? 
Thankfully, they were able to wake him, although he is clearly dazed and groggy. The reaction from John and James are of genuine concern and confusion, and Tim appears to be really out of it with a pale complexion. Deciding Tim's safety is more important, James and John help their fallen friend back outside and back to the car. Clearly shaken by the incident, John and James decide not to venture into the basement and instead, footage of their previous visit is shown. It is unknown what exactly happened, and no other paranormal activity can be seen in the footage, so it is undetermined if Tim was the victim of some sort of attachment. He does show the common signs of paranormal attachment, which often manifests as feeling lightheaded and nauseated, and can even lead to passing out. What could also be possible is Tim came under the effects of harmful dust in the building. Considering the age and state of the orphanage, it is possible Tim became overwhelmed by particles such as asbestos, a once common insulation that can cause damage to the lungs if breathed in. The fact that John and James were unaffected does cast some doubt on this theory, although it is still completely possible. Regardless, finding your friend unconscious on the floor of such an eerie location is certain to scare anyone. Thankfully, Tim was okay and apparently started feeling a bit better after resting by the car. With that said, the three decided to call it a night and left the location. John clarified in the video description and comments Tim was okay and recovered, as well as thanking those who expressed concern for his condition. On February 21st, 2021, John uploaded a director's cut of the original video, acting as a sort of commentary. John discusses his personal experience that night. He stated he felt concerned about Tim when he said he wasn't feeling good and expressed regret for not going with Tim to make sure he was alright. He also said he has received messages from people who had lived there during its operation, saying they actually had good experiences while residing there. They considered it a home with the staff taking good care of them. Comparing it to places such as Lechworth Village, it is a relief to hear good experiences about an orphanage as they can be notorious for negativity to put it mildly. When discussing the moment he and James found Tim, he said it looked as if he broke his leg. It is at this point John himself discusses a possible third explanation for Tim's condition. According to John, Tim had been up almost 30 hours at this point and had actually worked a full shift of work prior to joining the others. However, he also expresses Tim is sensitive to locations, including a time he collapsed at Skinwalker Ranch. This gives further support something had attached to him, but considering the positive remarks from former residents, it's hard to say what attached. It's good to know Tim turned out okay in the end, as these investigations can cause serious consequences. What is this cursed image? Shared by YouTube channel Kisa Weba, this scary video is currently trending in the Spanish-speaking YouTube community. This mysterious figure is something I never want to encounter in my life. The creature is seen lurking in the forest as if it's guarding something. But why is it staring at the camera? Is it curious? Or is it warning us to stay away? Shouldn't it be guarding a swamp instead? Upon further research, I tracked this image down to Brazilian concept artist Gabriel Soares, but that doesn't stop people's speculation online, suggesting that looking at this image will take us into the creature's very presence. Is it possible we're trespassing in its swamp right now? Whatever the case, I think it's best we get out of here before it's all ogre. While staying at a hotel room in Ireland, Roisin O'Brien grabs her dad to show him something bizarre. A ghost is moving a cup on its own, she tells him. Of course, nothing happens and she looks like a total liar until suddenly. <laughs> That's freaky. The cup moves all by itself to the edge of the glass shelf and then stops. There is no string around it that I can see, and besides, she is holding her phone and her dad is sitting on the bed clear across the room with his back turned, so no one was messing with it. She resets it and as soon as she complains that it takes the ghost a long time, the cup moves instantly. Well, like it's taken ages for it to go. <laughs> So let's just say there was string tied around the cup. 
Her father is now standing to the right of her, so if it was him, then the cup should pull to the right in his direction. Instead, it moves straight ahead and stops exactly on the edge of the shelf, same as before. The shelf is level and there is no moisture around the rim to make it slide like that. This is glass on glass. You can hear the friction. <laughs> She's right. The cup is moving on its own, maybe from a ghost. This man is a YouTuber and Twitch streamer. While trying to fix the motherboard on his computer, his friend is trying to teach him how to fix his motherboard, and he tells Ice Poseidon to press a reset button with a paper clip and then power on his computer. Okay. Now try pushing the power button on the motherboard or the case. <laughs> what just happened? The power to his room short circuits, so Ice Poseidon takes his computer to the bathroom and tries again. Yes, power's on. Oh, it's at this point that Ice Poseidon wisely decides to stop touching the back of his computer with metal objects. Now, I'm not a computer wizard by any means, but if somebody could please tell me what they were attempting to do and what they should have done instead, it would satisfy my curiosity. A YouTuber called Bangladesh Ghost Hunter, together with his trusty dog Thomas, go exploring abandoned houses and other fabled haunted places deep in the woods. One of their freakier finds takes place at night deep in the woods, where scary things are caught on camera, beginning with a scream. As they strain into the darkness, a large number of weird things are caught on camera that deserve further analysis. Watch this part beginning at 5 minutes and 39 seconds and see how much paranormal activity you can see in 15 seconds. Okay, at 5 minutes and 40 seconds, a strange yellow orb glances across the camera and goes away. Two seconds later, he turns his head as this pink aura is caught on camera that may or may not be the cameraman's finger. But in that moment, a strange wispy mist rains down on him that he can't see. 20 minutes and 40 seconds is when they finally see it. A form between two trees in the shape of a person. The flashlight chances upon it for but a brief moment and then it's gone. But it's still there watching them. Of that I am sure. This one will get you all kinds of nervous. According to the video, paranormal events have occurred in Guadalajara, Mexico, when a tourist was visiting the cathedral where the saint lays, the young child's eyes opened. According to the website, La Oscura Habitacion, the video was taken on December 12, 2012. The tourist who took the video footage on his cell phone claimed that he hadn't witnessed the child's eyes open at the time, but only saw it afterwards in viewing the video. The stories of how this saint became martyred are contradictory. Some stories call into question whether this is even the saint, as it's stated that all the reliquaries that remain of her are her skeletal hands. Whether this is the saint or not, the mystery begins and ends here. The girl is clearly past, has been for many years, and yet she's opening her eyes. A YouTuber named Jack Wagon has many videos demonstrating his apparent ability to manipulate objects using nothing but his own energy force. Here he circles his hands over a lock while concentrating deeply. It isn't long before he gets results. Not only is Jack able to push the lock over without touching, 
He is also somehow able to keep it balanced at a weird angle for almost 10 full seconds before falling. The only explanation I have for this is if there was some kind of magnet underneath the table, which I guess is possible. Next, Jack takes a steel fork in both hands and envisions the utensil becoming soft like butter. He ties the fork in a knot with his bare hands in a few simple twists. I'm honestly not sure how hard this really is to do, but it sure looks difficult to me. I'd really like for someone to tell me if this is a real display of energy manipulation or just some kind of trick. A camping trip goes from relaxing to terrifying after a series of bizarre lights leaves one camper sure that he's being watched. There, they're, at, they're started again. Whoa. These unexplained lights continued with no sound well into the night. And no, it's not lightning from afar if that's what you were thinking. He is pointing the camera straight ahead, not up in the sky. It's crossing the screen. But you're gonna want. Whoa! Now, did you see what I'm talking about? This part shows less detail, but the angle proves that this is not lightning at all. This is where it, it kind of creeps me out. Oh! There it is again. No lightning, because it's the same area every time and there's no clouds anywhere. There's a clear sky. He makes it through the night and later reflects that something, paranormal or otherwise, was trying to set a trap for him. He's glad he chose not to explore that area. So that strange incident took place in September of 2015. I want you to compare that video incident to another video taken two years later by someone completely different. These wispy lights appear at the same height and look exactly the same. The silent show has the same amber glow when zoomed in. This time the lights are more frequent and hang around for longer than before. What could cause such a flash in the night is beyond me, and beyond creepy too. And then something new happens. 10 minutes and 46 seconds is when three white lights form and hang in the sky. If you connect the skylights, you'll see they take the shape of a flying triangular disc. The light in the middle grows brighter as it turns to meet his camera, and then the giant slow-moving maneuvers itself away from him. Out of sight, the lights are definitely moving as one and never do they break shape or formation. And when you go to the comments section, you'll see it's flooded with people from all over the world who say they have seen the same strange lights at night in their area and come across this video looking for an explanation. None of them have ever provided a satisfying answer, and the unexplained lights persist. These paranormal investigators use a flashlight to communicate with their ghostly counterparts. Published by Mackie and Amanda in April of 2022, the pair explore the haunted Cosmopolitan Hotel in San Diego. The girls talk to the spirits in the hotel, requesting that they interact with this dangling string, and the spirits respond, just touch that string one time. <sighs> Did you see that? And if you're watching it, because I'm watching you hold the things completely still, I watched like how far it was going up against the line, yeah. you know? It definitely moved further. It, it looked like someone touched the string about a foot up. I don't understand. There's no way either. Later, while sitting in bed, they hear repeated noises. They check to see if someone is walking outside on the balcony, but no one's there. Then the water starts to drip in the bathroom, and it continues to sound like someone is in their room. I think room 11 was the one that they... Sounds like someone's in here. They ask the spirits to turn the flashlight off and then back on. After asking the spirits to repeat this act, the flashlight turns off and the REM pod in the bathroom goes off as well. Can you turn the flashlight off? All the way completely off. The spirits continue communicating with the girls through the flashlight. They find out that they're speaking to a ghost named Isadora. She confirms it's her through the REM pod. Okay. Okay, wait. Isadora, if that's you, okay, 
I was gonna say, can you go over to that REM pod we have in the bathroom? That, that red light. That red light that was just beeping. Can you make it start going off again? Can you make it start beeping? We'll give you like 15 seconds. Just like you said, yes. <gasps> oh my god. The correspondence continues for a long while, with Isadora being very communicative. Mackie and Amanda return to talk to her later. You'd be like, no one's here. No one's here now. I'm just give me a minute. Isadora? What was that? What is that? Wait, what is that? What's shaking? They check out early, because they're understandably creeped out. It sounds like there's many unseen residents of this hotel, and they're not leaving anytime soon. Morgan Adams is a popular YouTuber who doesn't ordinarily focus on paranormal content at all. So when she recently suspected that her house was haunted, you know I had to take a look. Let's go over the evidence and see if her suspicions are correct. She claims to hear tapping and scratching on the walls, which could be an animal, but then there's whispers too. When this happens, she uses Snapchat and almost always detects a second face nearby. She has named the spirit Angie and it seems to have become quite attached. Angie often responds to her own name. Angie. Oh my god. Angie, you have a lot of new friends that would like to say hi. Oh my god. Though Snapchat could be mistaking the shelf behind her for a winking face, and these two objects on the wall for eyes, Angie typically lurks around the corner of the house reserved for overnight visitors, coincidentally the same area where her dog Ollie absolutely refuses to go. Even with the promise of a treat, Ollie will only allow himself to go so far before he refuses to budge. Some dogs have trouble keeping their balance on hardwood floors and can actually develop a fear of them over time. I thought that could be Ollie's deal because he puts one paw on the wood and stops at 9 minutes and 8 seconds, but at 8 minutes and 52 seconds he has no problem walking on the same type of floor, so that can't be why. I think Morgan Adams could be giving a verbal command for Ollie to sit when she says okay at 9 minutes and 8 seconds. You tell me if Ollie is doing a trick or if he senses something and is too nervous to go forward. <gasps> come on. Okay. Come on. I don't think it's fake because then she tells him to come on and he still won't move. And when Morgan gets to the end of the hall, she hears a noise and shudders. <sighs> Plus, Ollie isn't the only animal acting weird. Her cat will freeze at the door like someone is on the other side. And Morgan even hears knocking sometimes. Cut it out right now. Stop! There's never anything there and yet the cat stares at the wall as if something has its attention. Literally? I'm gonna freak out if you don't stop. Oh my god, oh my god, there's orbs, literally. An orb of light also flies in the direction that her cat is staring. Odd indeed. Oh, and there's also this strange Snapchat photo taken in the middle of the night. It could be something photoshopped, but I see something more to it. To the left of the shadow person, I see a face on the wall and another peeking out from behind the covers. It almost looks like the exact same from a photo taken at the mountain pass, where Angie the spirit first followed Morgan home. And if you're wondering where Angie is in the photo, check out Morgan's shoulder. The dark hair is not hers. Finally, one night, her dad lets it slip that the property was built near an old burial ground. Tell me if you think he is telling the truth here or not. Do you think our house is haunted? Nope. The way he pauses and looks away makes me think he could have been trying to avoid saying anything that could make his daughter worry any more than she already has been. So is all of this real or fake? I'm 50-50 on this one, so your opinions will help me decide. There's nowhere to escape when you're on a haunted island. The Hype Mike crew soon realizes that not only can't they escape, but something is in the house with them. They discover the front door open. Did we leave the door open? Like I 
feel like we would have closed that, no? At least the wooden door too, you know? Then they see something truly terrifying outside. What was that? The guys described the creature. There's something outside, dude. There's like a what? thing. Look it had like its face was all like. I couldn't. I could. Something was on his face. I don't know if it was like a mask or something, but yeah, something was on his face, and he had like a like a. Outside, they hear a call in the wilderness. I think I heard something up there. And as they continue on, they get closer to it. Shh! Oh, what was that? A oh, how? We're definitely getting closer. Like, really close. And they get even closer. Oh my god! I thought it was another one of those skull things. I think we should try to like find its like base camp. Cause that Until they find its base camp. It's another one of those skulls. Oh Hello? Is this creature watching them? It seems to have left some sort of warning on the ground. What is that? Is that, is that a big one? Stop, 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 stop. What the f And amongst the brambles of the creature's base camp, they find this. Jesse? What? Look at this. We need to get out of here. Arriving at the water's edge, they see this. We gotta go. We gotta go. I think he's right. They've gotta go. Wouldn't you? I sure would. To kick off this entry, we enter the medieval old town of Edinburgh. The storied history of Scotland's capital lends itself to some truly legendary hauntings. This video illustrates that no matter where you turn in Edinburgh, you may find yourself face to face with the paranormal. Submitted to the Chills Narrator subreddit by Rocket League RL. Something frightening is caught on film in this normal, everyday Edinburgh park. Even J.K. Rowling found ghostly inspiration in Edinburgh, citing the very real Greyfriars Kirkyard, where you will find some of her character names taken straight from the cemetery's very own tombstones. Needless to say, Edinburgh is the perfect scene for paranormal sightings, as this video goes to show, on the banks of a lake, across the jungle gym bars of a playground, a phantom woman appears to stand still, as day turns to dusk, apart from the ghastly image of this figure stood unmoving there, strange incoherent sounds are heard throughout the clip. <gasps> Is this a case of Edinburgh's terrifying history come to life? Or are our eyes deceiving us? Some scary videos just stay with you, so much so that you wish you'd never seen them in the first place. This video comes from Ghost Crusaders, published to YouTube in April of 2020. This episode explores the haunted Lechworth village. The crew's very first haunted location, which they investigated in 2014, located in Rockland County, New York. In a 1921 report, over half of the residents in Lechworth were youth, 328 of the 506 patients, ranging from the age of 0 to 16. This fact may contribute to the negative energy in the village. As many Lechworth staff said a scarcity in necessary supplies, as well as food and water. Lechworth's conditions were exposed through photographs and media investigations, and although reforms were made in the 1970s due to public pressure, Lechworth permanently closed in 1996. 
Since then, the complex has fallen into decay. Everything remains how it was left, instantly abandoned. The Ghost Crusaders explores this institution and all its appalling history. The crew notes in the comments, while using an SB-11 spirit box, I never thought I captured any EVPs. It wasn't until reviewing the footage for this episode that I heard the voice, and yes, I can hear other voices like multiple people talking, which I do say at one point, but I edited it out for timing, but I can't make out what they are saying. If anybody's in here, at one point, the EVP captures a voice saying, So something comes through, it should be irrelevant. So it's not hard to get interference. So something comes through, it should be irrelevant. A moment later, the voice pleads, Please don't hurt me. Later, when they are in the bathroom, a voice, potentially from a phantom orderly of the hospital, tells them to sit, as if directing them to do their business on the toilet. That was a girl's voice, did you hear that? Yes, yes. Some of the EVPs mentioned are not very clear, but the female scream that's heard through the spirit box at one point is definitely frightening. Later, their cameras run out of battery, and while they're changing the batteries, the audio of the EVP is still captured. A voice says, leave me alone. At the same time, the investigator who heard the voice in real time, Dan, says he felt a cold breeze on the back of his neck, and he felt someone was standing behind them, whispering into his ear, Would you have the stomach to visit Lexworth Village? Neither would we. rough landing in Buckland, Alaska becomes even scarier when you learn all of the things the pilot said. The fact that anyone is alive is a miracle. They were trying to keep the plane from sharply veering to the right and colliding with everyone below. The plane's steering was off and nobody knew to get out of the way, and it's not like planes have horns or anything, so there was no way to tell them that they were in the way, while everyone on the ground was folding their arms and waiting. The pilot was freaking out and applying a maneuver called asymmetric reverse thrust. Basically, he reversed the engines to change the trajectory of the landing. It cost him a wheel but spared others their lives. So, the lesson of this scary video is to assume the worst and give planes plenty of room to land. Situations like this don't always have happy endings. The Goat Man is a thing of urban legend. Something like a centaur, the goat-human hybrid is said to take refuge in the woods. Some say it's responsible for many missing dogs. Published by Hype Mike in March of 2021, this paranormal crew is in search of the mythical creature in Goatman Forest. Half of them rush back to the cabin after hearing something out in the forest behind them, as the other half continue on. ginormous crack or something behind us, and we ran back to the cabin. <laughs> Wait, what? Something cracked right behind us, a huge tree or something, and we ride back to the cabin. They find red liquid in the snow, and I think we can all imagine what it might be. Did some animals have a scuffle, or was it something else? After being scared off by the roaring, the crew comes upon some even more scary evidence that something's gone wrong. This doesn't look like an animal's doing. Was it some ritualistic sacrifice? I mean, I guess. Like, there's a like on the tree and shit. Ew, what the heck? Deeper in the forest, they hear this spine tingling howl. Uh, hello? Repeat that. Did you hear that? And once they gather together again, they realize an axe has gone missing. Did the goat man take it? 
The crew decides to invite the goat man to the party with this chant, and they really shouldn't have. Okay, ready? Ready. Goat man, goat man, we, we offer, offer our, our blood, blood to you. Please, please accept and show, show yourself to me. Is that it? Later, while they're chilling at the cabin, one of the crew hears something. Okay. Currently, don't know for sure. What's up? What's what? What? Did you see that? No. See what? Outside. Okay. Left. Oh wait. What the f is that? Turn the light off. A YouTuber named Stromedy and his friend journey into a maze of tunnels deep underground to conjure the spirit of a girl who supposedly had her life forcibly taken down there long ago. They don't appear to be very serious in the beginning, but their attitude soon changes when they think they've summoned a relatively friendly spirit named Abby. Then roughly nine minutes into the video, they feel another presence enter and this happens. Oh, dude, it's doing figure eights again. What? Can you stop? Can you please? Yeah. Holy. That's freaking That's creepy. creepy. I'm gonna ask it. Whoa! Hey. They briefly consider leaving, but then Kyle volunteers to look through the middle of the pointer instead. Earlier, Abby said whoever does this will be able to see her true form. Kyle bravely puts the pointer to his eye and peers into the unknown. Kyle, you there, bro? Kyle. Dude. Dude, seriously. Dude. Let's just go. Let's go back. I know what you mean now. Let's go back. Did you see her? What did you see? Let's go grab the board and let's go. I think his reaction seems fairly genuine, but let me know if you agree or not. Translated from Portuguese, the video's title, The Bride of the Train Line, gives us some inclination of what fears to expect. Published to YouTube by Ravana in July of 2017, a group of adventure seekers are wandering down a train track at night. For a long while, they walk without encountering anything unusual. In the darkness, there's no one for miles around. City lights twinkle in the distance, but the group appears to be far from town. As they walk and chat carelessly along the train tracks, the camera pans to the side for a moment, where it captures this figure in white. <laughs> Terrified screaming ensues, as the men turn to run back the way they came. The bride figure 2 appears to race away from the tracks, presumably back to her haunted wedding. Does this deter you from jumping trains at night? If not, then you might be next in line to catch the ghostly bridal bouquet. There's no more haunted a place than a 20th century lockup. Published to YouTube by Heather Hauntings in March of 2020, Heather and her man are staying in a cell where inmates have allegedly passed away. The result? Major paranormal activity as evidenced in these two videos. Last used in 1984, the jailhouse was once the scene of at least one life taking and another person locked up took their own life. Of course, with such a twisted history, many believe former inmates now haunt its grounds. Paranormal investigators have heard caustic sounds, footsteps, and voices. Even the historian believes the place is haunted. Bullard told the Jasper News, Let's just say I went to the front door and left quickly. I heard something, I saw something that moved like a shadow, and I didn't stick around. Here all night. It seems enough of a warning for these paranormal investigators to know they're about to experience something truly chilling. In one video they explore, talking to the spirits via the spirit box, meanwhile hearing strange noises throughout the building. At one point when they black out the room, loads of EVPs can be heard on the spirit box. In the second video, as they're staying overnight in the cell, they attempt to communicate with the spirits again. After asking if another inmate took the life of the spirit, they hear a distinctive yes twice on the EVP. Yes. Yes. That was a very clear yes. 
At around 14 minutes 30 seconds into the video, they start to hear the lightest of footsteps. They attempt to catch some shut eye in the cell and around 3 a.m., the witching hour, something bangs loudly, awakening them. Around the same time they heard this noise, Greg says he felt something touch his leg. Needless to say, they couldn't go back to sleep in the cell. Could you? I certainly wouldn't. In a circle near a haunted hut, Own Vlogs sets out to complete the 12 hour challenge. <laughs> This is what happened. Us ab dhopdi hai, wo haunted wali. Nahi 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 dekh. Tera ye hai. Kya hai bhai dono itna kuch awaaz hai. Kaisi batau awaaz? Something is right outside their tent. When they exit, they hear it in the trees. Main ko dhopdi pe na halka sa bhi movement se dikhai deti. Dhopdi pe? Ha. And then they see it in the hut. Back inside their tent, they hear this, so they turn out the light. But that only seems to disturb it more. And just when they think the beast is gone. Back outside, it looks as though something disturbing has happened in the hut. Well, I'm not sure what beast is haunting them. I am sure of one thing. I will not be completing this 12-hour challenge. Sometimes you're not safe even inside your locked home. This video proves it. In June of 2018, two separate ring doorbells caught a woman trying to enter into Denver area homes. While several of the enterings were only attempts, one was successful. At 4 a.m., the unlucky homeowner, fast asleep along with his wife and two sons, said that he heard his back door open and after slowly walking, jumped into action. He launched downstairs, shouting if there was anyone down there, and he came upon the culprit in action, racing from the living room to the front door. The next door neighbor managed to capture her red handed, but to his surprise, not only did the ring video capture the woman at the neighbor's house, but it caught her attempted entering of his own home too. As it turns out, the culprit wasn't done. The following day, another nearby neighbor caught the brazen woman on his ring security camera, also trying to enter. It is very scary that she came back to the same street that next night, the homeowner said. She allegedly made off with the family heirlooms and his wife's wedding ring. The family's sense of security is their greatest loss, however. Almost a week later, it's hard to sleep at night. We feel violated as a family, the homeowner said. Will you be able to sleep tonight? A YouTuber called Survival Life tracks a gigantic snake across his local soccer field. I'm guessing that he must have been using a selfie stick to get this up close. But then again, it wouldn't surprise me if his hands and fingers were only inches away when this happened. Eventually, Survival Life backs off and leaves the snake alone. 
and I'm curious as to what kind of snake this was. I can tell by the tropical tree line that this video was taken somewhere near a jungle, in which case this snake could definitely be poisonous. Some of Survival Life's fans are saying that this was a cobra, and I just wanted to confirm what type of cobra this was. That way, we would know if Survival Life was risking a hospital trip or even his life here. Om is a popular YouTuber from Delhi, India, who for two years has been steadily growing his channel, Om Vlogs. At first, he would do normal things like go to a museum or an amusement park, but about a year ago, he started to get into ghost hunting. Now, he goes on ghost hunting explorations all the time, and they are really good. Delhi has a population of about 30 million people, so we are talking about a single city with as many people as the whole state of Texas, which means plenty of places to explore and plenty of ghosts to be found. So recently, Ohm Vlogs went to a building that was so cursed he wouldn't say the name of it or where it was, only that it was a restaurant in his hometown where something horrendous happened that made them close down and never reopen. On May 13th of 2020, they visit it for the first time, or at least try to. They don't get far because a presence guarding the area won't let them go inside. They stay at what they mistake for a safe distance and peer in. There's a light that's orange here at 8 minutes and 9 seconds coming from an otherwise dark room. They don't see anything else and chance a closer look. Ohm is talking more about the place when a mysterious shadow descends the wall at 12 minutes and 23 seconds. A minute later, they learn beyond a doubt that something is inside. His friend is standing next to him, so it's not him. They dare not enter, but they stick around for a bit longer. At 15 minutes and 22 seconds, a single pixel goes white while recording a room on the second floor. When they zoom out, the light mysteriously goes away, but not before more black shapes pass over it. By now, it's getting late, so Ohm is wrapping up the video when he senses something watching him and points out a shadow figure that only he can see in person. It doesn't show up on camera, at least not that I can see, but you should remember this area for later, because things are about to ramp up. Apparently whatever is in there is not happy to see them again. When they return a few weeks later, this time a white robed figure with a demonic head and two horns leans on the brick wall, as if taunting them to try and go in, which they don't notice and proceed to do. They shine their light into a blown out window, and eyes waverly reflect at 7 minutes and 5 seconds. The restaurant is obviously no longer taking reservations. They stand and brace themselves for whatever comes next, and when nothing happens, they decide to explore a few rooms before returning to the main area. As they think about whether to leave or not, a terrible feeling washes over them, and their camera goes out of focus like something is near, and it is. Ohm puts his hand up to shield the group from something they can't see but we can. At 10 minutes and 58 seconds, it's coincidentally standing in the exact same place where Ohm thought he saw something the first time. The building becomes more displeased with each passing moment. <laughs> But when they go into the room to leave, its guardian is absolutely gone. I guess it knew they were leaving and letting them pass without harm. And I think I heard a fire alarm at 11 minutes and 18 seconds even though the place clearly doesn't have one. I suspect it once burnt down. And what you heard was paranormal residual energy from the event. Ohm never does reveal the location, but there is a comment left by someone who thought they recognized the location and I thought this was interesting. If someone could please confirm that this location is on the Carnal Bypass Road in Delhi, that would be helpful. And tell us anything else you know about its haunted history. A paranormal channel called Gene Ghost Bangladesh goes exploring one of the most haunted abandoned places in his country. An old house in the woods where scary things happen to anyone who dares enter. Scary things like disembodied voices speaking from within.
and strange noises coming from where no one is standing. <laughs> And living vines move across walls. Watch this part and tell me if you think he was passing out from fear or a spiritual encounter. He recovers and they think they see a shadow figure looking around the corner. In front of the house is an all-seeing eye next to a doorway that spontaneously ignites in flames. Across from the flaming archway is this hand-painted altar with five candles on each side of a star. And outside could be the red handprint of a recent sacrifice. The drawing of an evil looking goat headed creature on two legs gives me a sinking feeling and I really don't like how a large white orb floats into it at 33 minutes and 20 seconds. The flames burn taller when they see this figure on the wall, as if the two events are somehow connected. They return to the altar and find creepy dolls have been pierced with steel wire through the head, and that's when... <laughs> There's a scream and the creepy dolls begin moving on their own while everyone is standing out of the room. They don't zoom in all the way so maybe it's on a string or at least I hope so because if not then that is some really scary stuff. Two friends are riding down the Kerala Highway in India when they see what they later agree has to have been a ghost of some kind. <laughs> The figure is dressed in pure white and holding something, maybe a flashlight. Creepiest of all is how they seem to be deeply staring into the darkness at something. They are in such a deep state of concentration that they don't even look up when the car zooms by just a few feet away. They remain frozen in place and seem to be holding their face in surprise. If this is a ghost, then they could have been looking at the roadside remains of their own body. A student is doing some schoolwork on his computer. When somebody comes in and starts recording, they have a short conversation that's interrupted by a large figure standing in the darkened doorway behind them. The creature's head almost touches the ceiling and its arms are so gigantic and long that they don't even fully fit in the camera frame. Its arms look long enough to pluck them from the couch and drag them to their doom. Fortunately for them, the two friends get away just in time and take off. They glance back for a moment only to find Slenderman silently regarding them from the top of the stairs. Now that you've seen this on video, I'm eager to hear if you think this was a real Slenderman sighting or just someone in a really good costume. Here's another strange sewer grate video that's worth mentioning. Huh? I have no idea what is making these high-pitched noises, and apparently neither does this person. The bleeding quiets down and then starts up again. Everything from toads to alarm systems have been proposed, but I have never heard an alarm system that makes that noise or any other piece of equipment on Earth for that matter. If whatever is making that noise is alive, then I hope they are not suffering. While this may be video editing, even so it's an image you won't be able to get out of your head. Posted to the Chills Narrator subreddit by Calligram, a young woman dressed in white with long black hair and shadowed eyes creeps backwards up the stairs. As she backs slowly away, her hair piles upwards onto the stair above. Obviously, this was shot forward and reversed backwards, but the effect produces the type of uncanny sensation that sends chills up your arms. Reddit agrees. Next time you're confronted by voices in a haunted house, you should probably just skip town. Redditor Alex underscore Paranormal TV posted the scary paranormal investigation to the Chills Narrator subreddit. It was originally posted on YouTube in February of 2020. 
The house being explored is a Coal Harbor house in London. As Alex Paranormal explains, we investigate the Cold Harbor house that no one wants to live in because of the extreme activity and what resides inside the Shadow Man. The exploration turns up loads of paranormal activity. At 8.53 in the video, Alex mumbles something as they're exploring, to which a disembodied voice answers, Yeah. A little later, after setting up the spirit box, it either moves or falls over on its own at 16 minutes 7 seconds. Well, it's coming through stuff, mate. Did you just knock that? Oh, oh man. It's not the mic, I'm a dad. Who are you? A short time after, at 16 minutes 55 seconds, an evil laugh occurs as the team attempts to speak with the spirits. Is this your room? Where are you? The laughter occurs again at around 22 minutes 9 seconds. <laughs> and at 22 minutes 49 seconds, a grunt can be heard. You just grunt then? Who was that? Was that you? As they're talking about the grunt, a very audible knock sounds on the adjacent door at 23 minutes 35 seconds. They continue to explore the haunted house. While they're in a hallway, about to enter another room, a door slams at 26 minutes 55 seconds. Oh, hold Slaps up here. Is that you? No. Continuing in their exploration after a while, they discover an old Tonka truck in a room. When one guy asks if that's an old Tonka toy, a disembodied voice at 31 minutes 52 seconds answers, yeah. Look at that. That's an old Tonka toy, isn't it? A number of other disembodied voices are noted throughout the video, as if the house was whispering a secret to them. If only they'd just listen. What was it trying to tell them? And what would you do in a house that talks to you? I'd just move out. According to NASA, the Apollo 20 spaceship never left the ground due to a lack of funding. This leaked video, however, says otherwise. Apparently, the mission was covered up after this strange structure was found on the surface of the moon. The leaked video is now referenced to as a moon base. Look closely and you'll see what appears to be an entrance ramp leading directly into the structure itself. It almost looks like some kind of vehicle is halfway up. Let me know if you see the supposed entrance, and if you think that there is any possibility that this leaked video could be real. I think it is kind of a stretch, but I do see what they are talking about. According to this paranormal investigator, a genie cursed him in his own voice. Let's enter this haunted home. While speaking to the spirits of the place, he hears an EVP. Bir işaret versin. Buradaki yaşayan insanları kaçıran varlık kendini belli etsin. When he walks into the kitchen, something disturbing happens. And then the spirit gets aggressive, but nothing is inside the room. When he enters the bedroom, he sees it. But as he gets closer and closer... Is this a magic trick? Well, it could be the genie himself performing a practical joke. I could also see how this could be faked. But then again, the knocking... 
Only a genie could disappear like this. If you have a fear of heights, you might want to step away slowly from the edge of this video. El Camino del Rey, or the King's Little Path, is a high walkway in Spain that traverses a narrow gorge in El Charro near Malaga. Originally built to allow workers at a nearby hydroelectric power plant to transport materials, the walkway was first constructed at the turn of the 20th century. Three feet in width and 330 feet above the river below, the walkway twists and turns around the steep walls of the gorge in a way that will make your head spin. It has been partially closed for more than 10 years after it fell into disrepair. In fact, it was once called the world's most dangerous walkway as five passings occurred. Across only two years, renovations allowed the walkway to be reopened in 2015. Going back to the original, by 2006 much of the path had deteriorated. Several sections of the original concrete had completely collapsed, leaving large open gaps only traversable by the steel beams. The handrails were pretty much non-existent, with only a safety wire in its steed. Regardless, Daredevil still walked the King's Path, and passings occurred regularly. Published in March of 2011 by AM, this video shows what it was like to walk the King's Path when it was in disrepair. The crumbling concrete stairs are guarded only by a short length of handrail. As the hiker makes his way upward, you can see the drop below is no joke. A single misplaced step can throw you hundreds of feet to your demise. Despite the risk, you can see why people put themselves in harm's way. The solitude surrounded by the glittering river below and the jagged rocks of the gorge is an experience worth having, not to mention the adrenaline rush of being a misstep away from passing on. Still, if your heart is pounding just by watching this video, I wouldn't recommend it. I certainly wouldn't do it either. If you ever find yourself in Moonville Tunnel in Ohio, you might want to tunnel your way out of there. This haunted railroad tunnel is home to legendary local ghosts. While visiting, this boy caught one on camera. After finding a pentagram drawn into the dirt, you can sort of see a pentagram there. He waited in the darkness. I'm hearing gunshots. While the noises could be explained by the wind and the wilderness, what do you make of this? Watch the white space at the end of the tunnel closely. Did you hear that? Do you see that? Here it is again, slower this time. The apparition looks like it's moving. It then disappears into the light. Another shot of the tunnel a moment later shows no figure around. But in my opinion, it could be the shadows of the trees or the brush to the right captured as the camera's lights adjusts. Watch as he zooms in again here. Here's somebody with their dog. It is strange though that the capture appears to be standing upright, and if it is just a shift while the camera's lights adjusts, why did it only capture this one distinct shape? Tell me what you think in the comments. This one has left me with more questions than answers. Published by Dark Ghost Paranormal in August of 2021, Dennis set up cameras in a bunker hidden beneath a school. And this abandoned bunker in Germany has some mysteries up its sleeve. One camera captures a door slowly opening. In another room in the school above, Dennis asks for a sign that someone's here, and this is the response. <laughs>
in the bunker. A blast makes Dennis jump. It sounds like it's coming from this box. Later, the light from his camera shuts off and he's left in the darkness. Through the spirit box, the spirits tell him it's a trap. Strange carnival-like music seems to be coming from the spirit box. As Dennis's lights continue to malfunction, he has no escape. The door to the room is locked and he can't get it open. He is in the darkness again with only a lighter to keep him company, while something unknown growls from the shadows. Later, he is told through the spirit box not to come. He finds the previously locked door mysteriously open to him. After racing out of there with his equipment, we can only imagine that he heeded the spirit's advice and never returned, which is a smart call. This clip reveals an underground entrance in Saudi Arabia. It was originally posted to YouTube by Bismax TV in August of 2019. According to the video description, the underground is claimed to be haunted. It certainly sounds like it. <laughs> Terrifying screams are heard coming from the depths of what looks like a bunker, or maybe even a well. There's a ladder leading down into a hole deep within the earth. The sacred text is being read, while screeching continues in the background. <laughs> As the tormented screams continue, so does the sacred text reading. But what we don't know is why, and what is going on in this underground bunker. Some in the comments say this is one of the scariest things they've ever heard. Others say it's definitely not fake and the latter perhaps leads to a secret torment chamber. YouTuber Psychic Afro Dancer offers up two interesting theories. One suggests that it's a red fox in heat. If you've ever heard audio from any animal in heat, you might consider this a valid theory. But the second theory is more appealing to those of us with paranormal leanings. It involves the belief in jinn. Jinn are spirits, demons, or supernatural creatures that appear in Islamic mythology and theology. Jinn are creatures, similar to humans, thus they are neither inherently evil or inherently good, and the word jinn is derived from the terms to conceal or to hide. You can see it's not a stretch that some suggest jinn means beings that are concealed from the senses. It's believed that jinn originated as animal shape-shifting malevolent spirits found in unclean places, deserts, and dingy, dark, desolate locations. Those who believe often try to protect themselves from jinn. Could this be jinn? Unredeemed, tormented in a scary hole. All I know is I wouldn't be going down there to check. <laughs> This video was recorded in Portugal sometime in 2001. It starts out with a group of friends just playing around with a home camera, which was pretty much considered a novelty back then. They are filming everything in the house for no reason at all for a long time, until they get bored and decide to try and contact some spirits. To do this, they make one of their friends named Nelson stand in a circle and concentrate in silence. Maybe it's just the power of suggestion, but Nelson sways for a bit and then tumbles to the ground. They aren't sure what to make of this. At this point, neither am I. So they make Nelson do it again, as they are trying to summon a spirit through Nelson for a second time. Something unexpected happens. <laughs> This time, another friend, Celestino, falls to the ground and begins convulsing. When he gets up, he is no longer the same person. If Celestino is acting here, he's doing an excellent job. Look at how his shoulder blades come jutting out of his back as he stands up aggressively. That definitely does not look normal. The rest of the video is them tracking Celestino as he behaves strangely outside. They don't know what to do, but at the same time, they don't want to lose sight of him. Eventually, they get split up, and when the one with the camera finds his friends again, none of them are in good shape. Merda, foda-se! O que é isto? O que é isto? Merda! 
I really hope that this was just a fake video. It does almost seem like the Blair Witch Project at times, which was very popular in 2001. Then again, I wouldn't underestimate the power behind conjuring spirits. So I'll leave it up to you to decide. YouTuber proving demons right. On our paranormal investigation at a haunted hotel, we capture a real shadow person hat man on video. Are you wondering what a hat man is? Let Dana Matthews from the site Weak and Weird explain the phenomena. According to Matthews, shadow men came creeping out of the shadows in 2011 when paranormal radio personality Art Bell cast a light into the darkness on his radio show Coast to Coast AM, and the result was a burgeoning community of people coming forward, explaining their encounters with these phenomena. Out of the shadow people phenomena, another slightly different experience arose, encounters with the hat man. Much like shadow people, the hat man often appears at nighttime, wearing a wide-brimmed hat, hence the name. Those who encounter him have described him as a solid black mass, darker than a shadow without discernible facial features, and no describable lower body. Apart from a long flowing trench coat, the hat man is often seen floating and moves without sound, quite frequently in a basement setting. Another quality of this phenomena is that the hat man tends to appear in places of high negative energy and family dysfunction. This video shows either a hat man or shadow figure haunting this generally creepy house. The figure flies down a hallway, disappearing into a distant room as the ghost investigators search the house's interior. So what's going inside this house? Is it haunted? The hat man phenomena is often a recurring one for many people, from childhood to adulthood. Some believe shadow people are evil, like physical medium Amy Allen, who thinks they are interdimensional entities. Although the hat man and the shadow person might seem one and the same, they do indeed appear to be two separate entities. If you see a hat man, consider your family dynamics and the energy of your relationships. Does this video make you believe in hat men and shadow figures? If so, don't turn around. Are you ready to spend the night in one of the most haunted places in the UK? Published in May of 2022, Exploring with Josh explores the Skurrid Inn, a place reputed to see high levels of paranormal activity. As the team spends their overnighter in the place, all is still and quiet until... Can you see it moving? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Holy f Oh my f what the holy shit? Just look at how fast oh my Bro, no bullshit. As they continue to explore the place, gathered in a pack, they hear this noise. See? <gasps> and yours. Two you can't fake that. That might be the most amazing evidence in a long time. Well, I'm actually kind of scared to sleep here. Then, as they're downstairs, they hear their music box detecting motion upstairs. When they ask the spirit to step forward, they hear it again. Who is brave enough to go and check it out? Upstairs, one of the crew listens in, relaying its messages to the rest. Norse? Norse. Viking. Leave. Leave. Dude, he's straight up talking about you on God. Dude, this is one of the messages is very clear, and the messages get more pointed. Fool. Fool. It's always devil like this and that. Who's the fool? You all. Oh my god. What the hell is your name? Unholy. The unholy. When the group suggests pulling their crew member out, the spirit becomes adamant. Dude, he said the craziest stuff to us already. Like, we can pull him out. Should we? Yeah. No, don't. Don't. Yeah, we should pull him out. Yeah, let's pull him out. That was probably the scariest one we've ever had for like SD's message. Now we're getting mixed messages. Does the spirit want them to go or stay? I'd sprint for it. ILMN Bono Paranormal goes exploring an abandoned factory that has become a haunted place full of many ghost sightings ever since an accident cost several workers their lives 60 years ago. Soon they discover firsthand exactly how paranormal this place truly is. Twelve days later, he returns for more. The big hole is there and no, no, no way. Some uh... no. Way. He 
He says he's done, but he doesn't mean it. Everyone keeps begging for him to go back, and so six days later, he returns for his final paranormal exploration at the haunted abandoned factory. You heard it. There is something. When you go back and look again, it does look like a shadow figure is caught on tape. Oh my god! Did you see that? Of course it's not here anymore. I don't know if you saw that, but it was standing right here. Standing just around the corner is a patch of darkness that is brighter than the rest. Was it a ghost sighting or somebody standing around the corner? Based on the other paranormal activity he's caught on camera, I think we all know the answer to this real ghost sighting. It's a creeping patch of darkness spreads without a sound over an unknown location, possibly someplace near the beaches of Malaysia. And then an underwater creature is caught on camera, doing some scary things that no one can explain. The giant underwater creature appears to be on the verge of breaking the surface at 23 seconds. There's a wave of displaced water that has everyone in the comments further vexed and perplexed. Some say this shimmering effect is a school of fish evading a predator. I would agree with this except not a single one jumps out of the water. The most eerie supernatural explanation offered is a Malaysian phenomenon called Salor Baidar, a name for underwater paranormal activity in which someone is instantly pulled to the bottom of the river by a spirit without warning. Apparently it looks a lot like this which I find scary to think about. The bizarre moment passes but they don't stop filming until more unexplained activity is caught on video. The mysterious shape bubbles to the surface once more at 58 seconds, and here at 1 minute and 3 seconds, I think it briefly breaks through. It could be the back of a whale or something, but it kind of looks like some kind of liquid on top of the water, like an oil spill. The person who actually caught this bizarre sighting says it's a video of a mysterious sea creature, but never does he provide additional backstory. This unexplained video has been stumping the internet since it was first uploaded on June 8th, 2018. No update has been provided, and I could find no other similar scary situations caught on tape. Let's put our heads together and figure out once and for all what this unsolved mystery really was. I'm like screaming or something in this tunnel. I'm gonna go check it out. You may think you're ready for this list, but some scary videos you're just not meant to see. The boy in this video says he hears something in this tunnel that sounds to him like a scream, so he decides to go investigate. But no, the boy enters the darkness with nothing but a void at the end of it. For a while, all you hear is his own footsteps, then you hear this. Sounds like Alien vs Predator up in here. The kid stops for a moment, and in that quiet, a couple footsteps splash through the water. He then says hello to the creature he cannot see, before heading forward again. But he doesn't get very far. The rattling sound echoes throughout the tunnel before the thing starts to screech in a way that makes your insides tremble. As he runs, the creature quiets for a time but lets out a final terrifying screech as the boy exits the tunnel, likely wondering what in the world he almost happened upon. Is this for real? If so, what lies in the depths of this underground? Dark Dominator thinks it's the rake, while the last one suggests it's a feral hog, but I've never heard a rattle like that from a hog before. Lesson learned, the next time you hear screaming in the darkness, it's best to run in the opposite direction. When in Kentucky, Bobby Mackey's is a must on your pit stop through Wilder. As the honky tonk place is often called the most haunted nightclub in America, and here's video to prove it. 
Posted by 303 Paranormal TV to the Chills Narrator subreddit, he writes, A few clips of some paranormal evidence caught on my channel. The footage was taken at Bobby Mackey's, which according to legend, has been the site of both life takings, takings of own lives, and of course hauntings. Folklore claims there's a gateway inside Bobby Mackey's and it's haunted by the ghosts of people who passed away on site and nearby. One of the purported ghosts is that of Pearl Bryan, whose body was found around two miles away. According to some, those responsible put a curse on the site and said that they would haunt those who persecuted the case. Of course, all these claims are unsubstantiated. Pearl Bryan's life taking is sadly true. No public records have been found to confirm Bobby Mackey's had any part in it, nor has the location's historical background regarding any other supernatural claims been verified. Regardless, some have captured paranormal experiences on tape at the site, including this video of a shadow figure moving across the wall in the empty club. Is there some truth in urban legends? Is this video proof of at least some unearthly presence here? I think I'd be too scared to ever find out for myself. When you aren't sure if your imagination is playing tricks on you, post to Reddit to get another perspective. That's what this group of friends did after experiencing this strange happening. Posted by Dro to the Chills Narrator subreddit. The uploader says that while filming his friend playing guitar at his house, they heard something pound at the door. What's that? Wondering what it was, they decided to pursue it. After leaving their room, they spot something dark peeking around the corner at the end of the hallway. It darts out of sight as the boys chase after it, turning the corner and up some stairs to the open doors that leads outside. Once out there, they call after Toby, the pet dog that accompanied them, when from behind a garbage can, a ball rolls into view, thrust by a creature's arm. Toby. They race off back inside. The Redditor asks, is this someone that broke into the house or is it paranormal? Let's see what Reddit thinks. The lovely Raven 313 writes, Either way, this video sent a spine-tingling sensation down my spine, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere near that house. Redditor Cheery B says, This is a terrifying situation, writing, I can't really point out that anything looks specifically paranormal, although the glowing in the middle of what looks like their head, when now they were at the top of the stairs, was interesting. Others warned the dudes to get out of there now. Paranormal or not, they should probably heed that warning either way. This poltergeist is throwing a tantrum. Published by Derek Hull in February of 2021, the angsty geist is first seen slamming a door in the cameraman's face. Exhilarated that he caught it on camera, the man races to the door and opens it, finding no one inside. He runs back through, asking the poltergeist to repeat the action, but the door remains open. One of the crew enters the room while the others stand outside, watching the door. They approach and the door closes again. It isn't clear if the other crew member was inside the room. As there was a cut in the video, it doesn't seem like he exited. They apologize for angering the poltergeist and say they will leave. Alright, I'm gonna open the door and that's it. We're gonna leave, okay? Sorry for f***ing off. But that's not without one last slam. This time coming from some shutters off to the right, I assume. One time. Oh. Is this spirit moving around them, or is it all encompassing? <laughs> what happens to evil when it's found out? This video reveals the fear even evil suffers when being discovered. 
If you've heard of the Watts family from Frederick, Colorado, then you know that this man entering his neighbor's home to review security footage is not a man but a monster. During the commotion and trying to find the missing persons, this video was taken on August 13th according to the timestamp. Just two days before being put behind bars on August 15th, the clip shows Watts' reaction to his neighbor's surveillance footage. The man's body language is quite telling. He will barely look up from his phone as the neighbor talks to police about how his surveillance camera is motion activated. Any motion that happens on the street, including an angle on Watts' home, is caught on camera. One of the videos shows Watts pulling his vehicle up to the house. In the clip, Watts claims that he parked where he did to bring tools in. He then puts his hands on the back of his head, completely bowled over by this unanticipated evidence. He sways back and forth, unable to keep still as his story crumbles beneath him. The neighbor repeats that if any action had happened during this period, he would have caught it on surveillance. In fact, the neighbor keeps his eyes steadfast on Chris, watching him watch the video, or not watch it because he can barely look at it. The entire clip is infuriating to watch. It makes your skin crawl. Watts can't get out of the house fast enough, and the moment he does, his neighbor admits his suspicions to police. It almost makes your heart stop. Truly haunting. Guava Juice is a YouTuber who is tired of hearing strange knocking sounds all over his house. He reasons that if he can summon Bloody Mary, Maybe he can get her to communicate with the other spirit and possibly convince it to go away. Little did he know that things are going to be a thousand times worse by the end of this video. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Oh my god. Bloody Mary. <laughs> oh. Okay. Now we wait. It doesn't take long before Bloody Mary announces her presence. You hear that's good. Yeah, it, it came from upstairs. If you're here, give us a. Whoa. All three of them feel uneasy now, and they're ready to leave. But much to their dismay, they find that the lights no longer work, and the door itself is mysteriously stuck shut. They finally manage to open it after a while, but their door problems aren't over yet as the door across from them glides shut on its own. Apparently, Mary is now on the loose in their home. They politely ask Bloody Mary to leave and then Guava Juice feels something tearing at his back. He takes off his shirt and finds six claw marks. No one really knows exactly what to do next or how to react which I would say is completely understandable given the circumstances. I don't think Guava Juice ever gave an update about the spirit in his home, but if he did, then I'd really like to know more about it. The story of the Watts family is a terrible and horrific incident most are familiar with, and which I've talked about a couple times in videos. But this footage is a little different. As many of you know, Chris Watts took the lives of his pregnant wife and two daughters in Frederick, Colorado in August of 2018. It's a horrifying event that appears to have called up some terrible energy within the Watts family home. Posted to YouTube by Conjure Queen Tours, who states that she's a medium psychic and empath in her comments. This footage purports to show ghostly images and EVP picked up by police cameras within the Watts family home. From figures in the mirrors to giggling girls, the cops come across some eerie things inside the home. According to some in the comments, many cultures cover mirrors when there's a passed away person in the home as they believe the souls can get trapped in mirrors and thereafter never leave. Is that what's happening here? Most in the comments agree that they feel unsettled just watching the video. Others say you can feel the negative energy in the house, and it feels alive. More even admit that this video left the hair standing up on the back of their neck. The police as well appear to feel it as they search the home, first for clues, and later when they were called by neighbors who claimed a female intruder had entered the premises. YouTuber Miss So Is Your Face writes, I've never seen a video where you can feel the energy. Wow. Can you feel it? I certainly can. Well, most of this dash cam footage on this list is completely explanatory and without mystery. This one has people watching and re-watching to try and make out what exactly they are witnessing in the video. 
A sheriff's vehicle is traveling along a lonely road in the darkness near Frogtown. With only its headlights guiding the way, the area appears forested with nothing but trees bordering a dark road. The deputy is talking with a local ride-along named Mary Scott as part of a Citizens Law Enforcement Academy program. They're simply chatting as they drive along, not anticipating anything unusual, until an unusual creature appears out of nowhere. A dark figure dashes across the road and alongside the shoulder. Caught on dash cam but nearly indiscernible, until the video is digitally enhanced. Both Scott and the deputy cry out in surprise as they spot the creature. What was that thing? The figure appeared to be standing on two feet, not four. According to Scott herself, it was really tall and it really looked like the pictures you've seen of Bigfoot. Well, of course, we can't know for sure what this blob is. One thing is clear. It doesn't appear human, nor does it appear animal. What do you think it could be? YouTuber Donna Aries has a roommate that she cannot see. Let's take a look at this mischievous poltergeist in action. Just come in, uh, just heard something so just uh, grab my iPad to see if I see anything. And I'm sh sure I saw the cup move, so I've just grabbed me. There you go, again. Donna does a good job of reassuring viewers that this is no gimmick. Number there, that's just a bracket from an old drawer that used to be there. There's nothing in the cupboard, it's just cutlery and stuff. Nothing under there, apart from pots and pans. There's no magnets. Even if the surface was wet, the way it's moving is not how an object would move across a wet surface. Underneath, there's nothing. It's just an old metal cup. Metal. And then this happens. Oh my gosh. The surface isn't wet or anything. It's all dry. So there's no reason for it to be moving. And it's moving again. The only thing I can think of to debunk this is the nearby stove. If it's an induction stove, then it uses magnetic fields to generate heat. It would follow that a metal cup nearby would be drawn if the field is strong enough. But that's just a theory. And the way the cup moves is too erratic. Do you have any ideas? Maxim has returned to an abandoned cellar where a witch hid a doll in a coffin, and he probably should have kept away. Published by Russian channel Paranormal Point in May of 2022, Maxim does a ritual with the doll, lighting it ablaze. And he is told this by a witch. As he prepares to leave his camera in place and go outside, the witch reacts. And before long, things fall apart. After nearly being buried alive, he returns to the cellar to retrieve the items, after which he buries them. The spirit confirms that what he's done is correct. Do you think he's safe now? Me neither. Most of the time, security cameras capture hours and hours of useless footage. Sometimes, however, they capture something like this. Published in September of 2013, YouTuber Rainy Schooler writes, A woman walks out of the darkness on a cold and wet night in the mountains far from a busy road and no immediate neighbors. The security camera is aimed into the wilderness and you can see a tree to the right side of the screen but nothing else. That is until, right in the middle of the shot, the figure appears. 
walks and stops and turns awkwardly, not turning with her feet but just twisting with her upper body. Then she walks forward again before taking a sharp right turn and veering out of sight. The video moves forward about 45 seconds until the woman is seen winding around the tree and then is spotted back in the middle again, looking off into the wilderness moving in the same strange start-stop fashion that she was doing before. A different security camera captures the woman walking up towards the house. Out of sight, it's not clear what she did alongside of the home, but she is soon seen again walking haphazardly away and around the same area near the tree in the back. She did this for 10 minutes, the video notes. Many in the comments think this woman must have been on something, but in the middle of nowhere, what do you think? I'm just glad they had security cameras so the homeowners were aware of her activities. Flickering lights are one thing, but a switch visibly turning off of its own accord? That's a whole other story. Posted to the paranormal subreddit by Nutzack, the redditor writes about this unexplained encounter that his brother caught on camera. According to Nutzack, his brother was home alone, likely checking on his family's dog Oscar, when suddenly the hallway lights started doing their own thing. He recorded the incident as it continued, and this is what he captured. Nutzack states that he lived in the house for two years and has always felt strange vibes but never seen anything firsthand. He writes, Now after watching the video countless times, I am stumped and believe there is something beyond our knowledge happening here. Two switches control this hallway light. Both you can see in the video. One is right next to the guy and the other is at the end of the hallway on the left. According to Nutzack, you can see the light switch nearby turn about halfway down, which as the redditor writes would be impossible to recreate. Next it flicks off entirely, turning the hallway light off. This one you can see as clear as day. Some are all in with the paranormal theory, but there's always a skeptic among us. And this time it's Slick Air who states, a combination of loose wiring and a faulty switch can cause this. Others in the thread suggest not even faulty switches can flip off of their own accord. What do you choose to believe? Oh my... still kind of see it. Dude, there's this weird thing flying around. Where is it? Right there. Oh my... What is that? Julia Marie Madness is being driven close to madness by a strange light that she is having trouble explaining. A light that's as interested in her as she is in it. Watch this and tell me if you think it's a camera glitch or something else. Oh my god, what is that? It's scaring me a little bit. It's like right here. She's worried about the orb trying to hitch a ride in her car, but some say she should be more worried about it attaching itself to her in a possible possession attempt. It's like right next to me. It's like right next to me. Dude. Dude, don't come in my car. Whatever this is, a car's passing headlights does nothing to change the size or appearance of the apparent ghost orb, so it doesn't seem to be a trick of the light. I'm not saying this can't be a glitch, I'm just saying it's very weird, and so as almost everyone else who's seen the full video, it first appears in a flash of pink light, almost like it teleports in from nowhere, or the pink light is just her thumb. It goes away after a while and she can't recreate the circumstances to make it appear again. Ready to activate your night terrors? Posted by Acid Gatter to the Chills Narrator subreddit, the redditor writes, Think this is fake but still scared the living blank out of me at the end. Originally published to YouTube by Leadbelly in June of 2011, the uploader claims that something's watching him. In the video, the man says that this is the third night this week that he's heard something. Then you hear it too. An irritating groaning is coming back from the bathroom. <laughs> Redditor Philco79 writes in the comments that it sounds like a Tauntaun, which is a non-sentient lizard from Star Wars. The man follows the sound there and finds that the bathroom is empty, or so he thought. He turns the corner to capture this. 
the demon face does indeed appear brunt or like a frozen plastic mask, but somehow uncannily real at the same time. In the comment thread, Acid Gatter says he came across this video when he was researching shower demons because he senses a presence every time he closes his eyes in the shower when the curtain is closed. Redditor, after seeing this video, I'm pretty freaked out about a potential shower demon too. Out in the woods sits an old house with a reputation that I'm sure you'll recognize. This is where none other than the Blair Witch itself is said to frequently reside. I've always been under the impression that the forest creature was simply a made up story, but tonight Jay and Kevin are pairing up to put the legend to the test. After getting lost in the woods, they finally find the Blair Blair Witch House and cautiously step inside. The walls have writing on them from previous visitors, but something else seems to have never left and now watches from afar. Clumps of black hair in the sink, long and uncapped, evidence of the Blair Witch, or at least proof that they are not alone. As they examine it, I see something is peeking through the window at them at 7 minutes and 36 seconds. 6 seconds later, it's just an empty black space again and when they walk into another room, the EMF indicates more activity at the far window, just as a mysterious white light appears. I wouldn't be surprised if the witch was watching from behind those drapes, but for some reason, they don't check, perhaps out of fear. Jay doesn't get any more EMF readings inside of this room in particular, and I think that's because it's not in there with them, but rather watching from someplace outside. Soon, Jay feels himself being pulled back to the room they were just in. Do you want me to go in this room again? Make this meter go off if this is the room you want me in. Absolutely. Thank you. I have little doubt that Jay forms a true paranormal connection here because the timing is too perfect. Not to mention it confirms its presence twice. So this this is the room that we're supposed to be in. In this room is a large dirty window that is difficult to see out of. At precisely 11 minutes is when the outline of a tall woman is barely visible. So something definitely has happened in this room. Meanwhile, something guides Jay towards the closet where a traumatic event no doubt once occurred. Is this the closet that you told us about? Something in there is standing in front of him. A child who lost its life at the hands of the Blair Witch, who is showing Jay to the very same spot they lost their life at. Where'd you go? Oh. And if you listen closely at 11 minutes and 47 seconds, you'll hear the ghost whisper hey, right before the meter spikes as high as it can. Where'd you go? Oh. Jay continues to receive flashing lights at exactly the right time. It's like he's really having a conversation. Make that meter go off if you want me to pull out the spirit box and talk to you. Yeah. Thank you. The EMF continues to pulse in a steady rhythm as Jay sets down the ground rules. No following him home. No possessions. You're not allowed to attach to us or follow us home though, okay? It glows more excitedly as he reaches to turn on the spirit box. And when he does, the spirit whispers this quick warning. followed by a mysterious black spirit orb that gives me a bad feeling. And when they ask the child what happened in the closet. Did something happen in that hallway closet? <laughs> this creepy laugh is their only reply. They pick the EMF meter off the ground and confirm the presence of a boy standing right in front of them. In no other room do they experience this much electromagnetic activity. A sweep of the other rooms detects nothing paranormal. Now the only place left to explore is the screened in front porch, which they can only get into from the outside. As they approach at 29 minutes and 44 seconds, you can see that nothing is in the front of the door. Yet the bottom half of the door is mysteriously stuck shut. And when Kevin makes a comment as to why the door isn't opening. I don't know, all this. There's so much crud on these hinges that the door is not going to open for you. It suddenly opens effortlessly. What? That okay. just... Yeah. Like, you witnessed that. Yeah. What in the world just happened? 
I don't know if that was paranormal or just a jammed door coming loose, but given the timing of everything else, I'm going with spirits. The inside smells like something freshly burning, even though the chimney hasn't been used in quite some time, and even though they couldn't smell anything through the other side of the screen, and as they stop to investigate it, they catch a fleeting glimpse of this tall figure covered in rags behind them. They leave not knowing how close they came to seeing it for themselves. Something is certainly still living here, and if it's not the Blair Witch itself, then it's something close enough, and maybe even worse. This paranormal investigation takes place in an abandoned building in Indonesia. I can't tell what is being said, but you don't need words to tell this person is being relentlessly stalked by something not of this world. First they play some kind of song which I think is meant to summon spirits. A short while later a shadow person peeks around the corner and appears where his thumb is. If somebody could please translate what is being said here, then maybe it could help us piece together what this video is all about. <laughs> I don't think he noticed anything at first, but this is the exact moment he sees the spirit. Again, please translate if you can, and tell me if you think he sounds sincere or if he is acting. <laughs> the way he turns and bolts without saying a word is very realistic, so I'm inclined to believe this is not a joke. And when he looks again, the ghost is up way high in the left corner. I think he is losing his mind at this point and he squats in the corner too high. He thinks he is safe, but the door opens and closes by itself and a strange mist floats up towards the knob. He runs away and stops to look around, panting, completely out of breath and scared senseless. This faint moan before the video ends makes me think he did not make it out alive. <laughs> While driving over a long period of time, it wouldn't be unusual to hallucinate a sighting on the side of the road, a deer or a cow perhaps. But might an entire car full of people see the same hallucination at once? While driving in the Philippines, a group including actress Myrtle Sorosa was traveling across what the narrator describes as a far-flung area. They had to take an alternative route from the original, as one was flooded, while another was shut down due to a landslide. After enough road was cleared to cross, they traveled across the mainly deserted, uninhabited area. No street lamps, some trees, but mainly just road. It was after midnight when, out of nowhere, they saw it. <laughs> what appeared to be a 10-year-old child wearing a bluish-white shirt crouched in the middle of the road with his arms and hands covering his face. An uproar can be heard on the video as they pass the figure, and most of the people in the car claim to have seen the boy. They wanted to stop and return, but the area was unsafe, so they decided to watch the dash cam footage to make sure that their eyes weren't deceiving them. The footage showed a white blob-like orb figure appear and then quickly vanish. The driver believed the spirit they saw was of a child who had his life taken by a typhoon. According to one passenger, if he was really just a spirit, I hope he can find rest. If he was really a child, my conscience will forever haunt. Franco TV is one of the few ghost hunters I've come across who isn't afraid to investigate solo. In fact, he prefers it. Charging into the middle of the action and staying put is his style. Rarely does he run. On September 7th, 2018, Franco TV goes to an abandoned house that's way out in the Florida forest. I can't tell you the exact location, but I can tell you the name. The Edison House. What's inside leaves him a sweat-soaked mess. The address is so secret that he had to track down some of the previous owners to find it. And since no one can stand living here for more than a few months, there were plenty of previous owners to choose from. It was accidentally built over a gravesite, according to them. 
And that's all they will say because it's so cursed that just talking about it could possibly bring about years of misfortune. None of this concerns Franco enough to keep him from going inside. Through the condemned door is a trashed interior that fills the investigator with the type of dread that burns stronger with every step. Everything about it feels off and wrong in a way he can't explain. Past a crumbling kitchen is a small kid's room that feels colder than the rest of the house. And as he's reading but not adhering to the simple instructions on the wall. Get out. <laughs> he hears the giggle of a child. The laughter comes from behind him practically in his ear. And he turns against a wall with a mysterious red stain that looks like it's squirted out of someone's neck. Across from him, this witch-like face appears against the window. It's most visible at approximately 3 minutes and 12 seconds, eyes and all. Undeterred, he goes to where it was standing and looks inside the room he was just in. As he's doing this, the same face now regards him through a crack in the doorway at 3 minutes and 40 seconds. It doesn't look like it's part of the door, but I guess it could be. The upstairs is cramped and uncomfortably hot. Down the hall is a red handprint that could belong to a child, except it's too high up on the wall. Perhaps they were struggling with someone trying not to be carried into this room. As Franco stares into the room, dozens of comments point out this figure staring back out at him from within the closet. Just like the far wall says, I couldn't really see anything at first, but when I did, I suddenly wished I didn't try so hard. Something's there. Franco doesn't spend much time in this room because he gets an especially bad feeling, but one thing I noticed was this jet black spirit orb float up towards him and disappear. That's not a bug. The anxiety he gets from the second floor is a little too much, even for him, and look what happens when he goes back downstairs. I'm hearing all sorts of noises everywhere and I don't have no cover at all and I'm in the middle of the forest. So that's kind of like one of the reasons why it's going to be a little bit weird for me because I just, I can't deal with that. This just so happens to be one of the only times he films behind him so maybe this part is set up. Anyway, this was back when a supernatural challenge called Charlie Charlie was popular and so he decides to play around before calling it quits. He sets up two pencils and waits for the ghost to respond. Is there anyone in this house right now? Is there anyone that's up? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I see no string. Do you wish me to leave this area? A closer look under the light at 9 minutes and 17 seconds shows that nothing is tied around the pencil at all. He follows its advice and goes outside. By now, Franco is soaked in sweat and still hearing movements that I don't think he's making up because they sound too far away, deeper in the forest. And uh, from there, from, from there I'm going to head home. After that, I'm done. I gotta get out of here. Part of him wants to leave, but he knows he has to explore the surrounding property because it's where more spirits roam around their unmarked graves. While staring out into the wilderness, he hears them. What the f is that? It's not traffic because there's no roads out here. And exactly two seconds later, it's accompanied by a voice warning him never to return. Holy Advice that Franco TV decides to take as he walks away from the Edison house with the blank, horrified stare of a man who has been shown far too much. A strange and mysterious object is found in the woods by a YouTuber named Grant and has his whole group of friends startled by what's inside. Wrapped in tape and caught in the bushes is a creepy red color, faded from being out here so long. They pull at the tape and three minutes later, they're finally ready to reveal the revolting contents inside. Hold on, open it up for a minute. I gotta, I gotta record it. Look at it in there. What is that? Look at that. What is that? What is that? <laughs> what is that? I don't know. 
<laughs> Gray floating chunks rise to the top of the gelatinous pile, an unknown mystery sludge that blows them back with a rotten stench on a windless day. They run away from it more than once. Things get weirder as a frightening conclusion creeps over them. Hey, this is like a somebody's body. Who left somebody's body? Huh? I don't know. I'm holding my breath every time I go over there. Okay, it's kind of sketch, bro. Why you with duct tape? It's I'm calling that one. Don't call the don't call the emergency one. Someone is leaving this weird thing in the forest, one of the scariest finds of their life, and whoever it is has a lot of duct tape. There is a lake nearby, so I hope it's a fishing cooler full of improperly disposed bait and not what they fear it is. We never get an answer to this unexplained video, so tell me what you think this mystery substance was that made them call 911. Driving in the Himalayas can be beautiful, unless you're opposite an angry driver. Published by Extreme Out in July of 2016, this driver was descending the dangerous Rotang Pass from Manali to Leh when he crossed paths with a heavy truck moving in the opposite direction. The driver notes that everyone should be patient in such conditions because impatience can lead to lives lost. They didn't find patience in this truck driver though. The man writes that he dipped his lights on the narrow mountain road to indicate that the truck and car ahead should stop and let him pass if they had a wider road. The truck did not signal back but the car indicated that there was space to cross and so he should move forward. After moving to the side, the car passes easily but the truck is taking its time, which is understandable as you can see how bumpy the terrain is. However, it became clear that the truck driver apparently wasn't going to pass at all. After sitting for a moment, the uploader starts to reverse to give the truck a wider berth and instead the truck drives right at him. He raises his hand for the truck driver to stop and then continues to back up on the dangerous road, which he notes is not easy. Again, instead of passing, the truck is directed at him. The game continues for a time until finally the truck passes. They stopped him to argue, wondering why he acted the way he did. Was it a threat out of spite? Or did he really not have room to pass? From this angle, we will never know. Orange orbs is how one witness describes this unexplained video of light spotted in the sky. Posted on January 16th, 2021, the bizarre sight was caught on Snapchat video hovering over the Bronx. What looks to be a starlit sky is anything but, as these mysterious stars start shifting in one direction as a single unit. I thought I heard creepy sounds coming from the sky too, as it passes but I think it's traffic. Those things are orange. Look at them. Next to each other. They literally fly next to each other. They orange in color. They look like stars. Look at that. It's a triangle. When you connect the points together, you can see he is right. The mysterious lights do seem to form a bizarre triangular shape in the sky. This observation makes me suspect that this strange sighting could be a government experiment. The outline looks like the same shape as the fabled Aurora project, but why the designers would put large visible lights on a stealth aircraft doesn't make sense so that must not be what this is. The person recording is stunned beyond belief and turns to some strangers to talk about the encounter. You guys know what that is? Two seconds later, the lights mysteriously change color, and one of them goes away completely. They continue hovering over a building for some time, and then the video ends before we get a chance to see if it lands or what. I'm not sure what to make of this mystery, and neither is anyone else who watched this video. Information is tight, and I couldn't find any other videos, but one person living in the Bronx says there were actually five points in the sky when they saw it. Another person claims to have seen the same thing seven years ago in Virginia, but like I said, there's no video evidence besides this. The way the lights change colors makes me wonder if this is a drone. Apparently drones must have different color lights to indicate when they are changing directions according to the law. 
so people could be piloting them in a formation from the top of the building. Or maybe we've just been visited and now they're here. Do you think you could stick it out in an abandoned former asylum and what if you were being watched when you got there? Published to YouTube by This Is Dan Bell in September of 2015. This place of nightmares is a hauntingly beautiful house of horrors. The stone building is hidden in an overgrown woods and naturally Dan enters the basement first, wallpaper chipping from the wall. As he explores, Dan explains that he kept hearing noises throughout his exploration, which sounded like a person. He thinks a former patient returned to this building and was living there. Well, as a viewer, you're likely distracted by all the intricate details of this building, including its decorative tiles and molding, its stained glass sunroof and one stairwell, its fireplaces and chandeliers. You might miss this figure in the doorway. Dan himself only noticed when safely back home, watching the video back. The point in question occurs at around 7 minutes 5 seconds, when he's turning a corner around a stairwell. There's an open door in a hallway beyond with light shining against the door, and a shadow is plainly visible. It moves as Dan turns to head up the stairs. Plenty of other strange things occurred during this visit, including Dan's battery popping, and what looked like red stains found on the tile floor in an upstairs room. That's probably the point where you should get the heck out of an abandoned building. I'm just glad Dan and his team made it out. Paranormal investigations can be a scary experience in a group, so imagine conducting one all by yourself. The Spectral Researchers of Central Florida is a group dedicated to investigating alleged paranormal activity from across the state. Aside from doing the normal group investigations, members have also gone to locations alone to explore and potentially collect evidence evidence. This is a method often done by paranormal researchers and is therefore more susceptible to encounters. On February 21st, 2021, member Robert ventured to the Hall House, a former assisted living facility. With the help of a Kinect, he ventures through the building hoping the infrared dots on the device will help pick up any unseen entities. Three minutes into the investigation, Robert captures a thump coming from behind him. I just heard some big loud thump. While it could easily be the sound of Robert walking, he has been walking around frequently throughout the video, and not once do his footsteps make a sound resembling such a noise. In fact, they are practically silent. Later, while in another room, Robert accidentally walks into something protruding from the wall. This is understandable as it was pitch black in the house, but what is strange is if you listen closely, you can hear someone whisper what sounds like toe. The voice sounds too high to be Robert's, and it doesn't appear to be his breathing as the voice can be heard happening at the same time Robert is exhaling. Just before the 6 minute mark, he enters a room and asks whose room it was. While it is rather faint, an answer comes sounding along the lines of mine. Again, are you a former resident? Could whoever used to reside there be confirming it was they who lived there? One possible creepy moment happens when Robert is standing in another room, looking out into the hallway. Several green lights are projecting from a device on the floor to both help Robert see the walls in the dark and potentially capture any entities which might block out some of the beams. As he looks into the hall, it looks as if there is a figure standing at the opposite end. The figure appears to be wearing some sort of gown, which would make sense as this might have been the garments worn by a former resident. Robert doesn't appear to see the figure, possibly because of how dark the room was, and the apparition may have been more visible in the camera's night vision. It can be seen at several other instances when Robert looks down the hallway until it completely vanishes. Close to the halfway point of the investigation, Robert's camera appears to have a malfunction. Without explanation, the focus suddenly becomes fuzzy. 
Robert notices this and wonders if he accidentally zoomed in. However, us viewers can clearly see he did no such thing, and the vision blurred randomly as he panned over. Ghosts have been known to cause technical faults in electrical equipment, a phenomenon explained as entities drawing energy from the various devices investigators use. This can cause batteries to rapidly drain, lights to flicker, and even equipment to break. Luckily, the picture corrected itself after a minute. The picture returned to normal just as quickly as it had malfunctioned. One commenter points out they heard what they believe sounded like a woman saying, I see nothing but the darkness as we move. Upon investigation, we could not hear what sounded like a woman speaking, but what it does sound like is the shuffling of feet and even a faint step. Robert is standing still at the time so it is not him. Have a listen for yourself and see if you can hear the voice. The most compelling evidence comes when Robert can sense someone in the corner of the room. When he points the connect there, the device projects a figure seated, facing towards him. Hello? Would you be able to tell me your name? The figure even appears to brace itself against the wall to stand. When Robert asks for a name, the figure appears to either wave or gesture to something. It is difficult to determine which. Robert's investigation of the building definitely paid off with this discovery, and we are hoping the team returns to the location in the future. While not full of activity, there was certainly enough to determine something has remained long after the doors were closed for good. The state line bridge connects Virginia to North Carolina, but locals call it Satan's Bridge due to the large amount of ritual activity going on under there. A YouTuber named Scary Weather made a documentary about it almost 20 years ago, and recently came across the footage again. The first half of the video shows nothing but animal bodies littering the ground, which I can't show here. He then comes back the next day and videotapes all of the weird graffiti and other ritualistic scenes, like these five rocks for example. If you happen to know what this symbol means, or what enchantments were being cast here, then please share what you know, and also tell me what the white paint means here, because I honestly can't even begin to guess. Um, also you see here uh, five stones uh, with a white mark in them. This part of the bridge looks like it could be some sort of altar. There's a huge dark red stain on the ground that trails off into tiny blotches. Something tells me that's probably not paint, but let me know what you think. There's one last fact about this location that I have to tell you. Now, I'm not a numerical conspiracy theorist by any means, but the identification number of this state bridge happens to be 6906. If you take out the zero and flip the middle six, you get three sixes in a row. A girl and the person filming were innocently playing around outside, but they were not alone. Published to YouTube in May of 2019, nightmares abound after watching this video, which is gaining attention in the Spanish-speaking YouTube community. The clip shows a girl playing with a ball outside a yellow fenced-in building. She runs up to the fence, behind which a pair of swings are wrapped together in knots. After a moment, the girl points at something, or someone behind the camera person, who turns around to see what she's indicating. There is no one in the distance across the field, but there is someone right behind her. The ghoul of a girl appears semi-transparent as the camera's shot falls. We can only imagine the camera person fled in fear from this thing she was not meant to see. Tag, you're it. Game over. This person's spirit didn't stay in the ground. Published by Scary and Mysterious Stuff in January of 2022, this ghost hunter was walking along a road near an old graveyard at night when he spotted this. The ghostly figure could, of course, be a statue. It does seem to be standing abnormally still at first, then it clearly starts to move.
Its long robe flows behind it as it strides forward. The cameraman comes closer and finds it kneeling before a grave, praying. When it turns to look at him, he shoots off like a light, running as fast as he can before his lights are out forever. Definitely the right call. In 1974, Disneyland opened up a new attraction called America Sings, where robotic animals would sing together as one. Animatronics was a relatively new technology at the time, and this footage was taken just weeks after the attraction debuted. Yankee Doodle liked the South, sang their songs so dear, thought they were most elegant for everyone to hear. The show is going as planned until a loud interruption happens just seconds after the lights go down. What you just heard was supposedly the final screams of a Disneyland employee named Deborah Stone. Deborah was an announcer for America Sings, and she passed away after accidentally stepping into a powerful mechanical device used to rotate the walls of the theater. Apparently, Deborah's demise is a true story, but I can't tell if this scream was really hers or added in later. The scream itself does sound a little too clear to me, and possibly sounds like it was recorded using modern equipment, but I'm definitely not an expert in this department. If you think this scream was real, then be sure to let me know how you can tell. You may remember me talking about D-Menace in a previous video, but I wanted to give this video a further analysis. To describe D-Menace in short terms, the best would probably be Adrenaline Junkie. First appearing on YouTube in 2018, he has posted a variety of videos from conducting one breath dives to venturing deep into tight caves. His videos are not for the faint of heart and can distress people with the feats he conducts. He has also posted several urban exploration videos. In June 2020, D ventured into an abandoned malt factory complex with several buildings to explore. All alone, he traveled through the dark and derelict halls. For the first half of the video, nothing particularly strange happens. D ventures through the various passages and even into the basement, finding strange and even beautiful graffiti on the walls. As he approaches the stairs to the basement, he feels apprehension as, in his words, the walls and ceiling begin to resemble the altered state of Silent Hill when it transitions to Otherworld. I think I reached a really dangerous and scary part here because it's starting to feel and look exactly, but exactly like in Silent Hill. After some time, he decides to continue down the depths. Here, he finds a red bed or chair, something that gives him the creeps. Written on it in German is, raise your legs and chill. He continues to explore the basement, but is in a constant state of discomfort from the darkness and his mind playing tricks on him. Therefore, he decides to head back upstairs. He then states part of what creeps him out about this place is the lack of wildlife residing in the building. Unlike other places he's explored, he hasn't seen a single bird or rodent since arriving. As he makes his way into the second part of the complex, he begins to feel more anxious, hearing noises around him. He admits he is unaware if it is because he is simply spooked or if there is another person inside with him. Not long after making this statement, D discovers he is, in fact, not alone in the complex. As he is showing the view out the window, a man suddenly and casually walks out from the trees. Completely oblivious, D sees and is recording him. The man walks calmly to the same building D is in, but D is clearly nervous and says he hopes the man does not have ill intent. He then hears the man speaking, but it is unknown to whom. After, D becomes quiet, listening and acting increasingly anxious. Soon he enters a similar room to where he first saw the man walking up and is startled to see a pair of legs on the other side of a hole in the wall. He quickly quiets down and kneels, but realizes the man must have heard him as the legs retreat in the opposite direction. Realizing the risk of this situation, he decides to try and exit the building. 
However, as he approaches a corner, the man emerges and pushes D to the ground. After some exchanged words, the two men calmed down and discover it was a simple misunderstanding. The other individual, named Jonathan, is just another urban explorer who is also unsure of Dee's intentions. Luckily this time, for both men, neither were there for anything bad and were just wanting to check the place out. Dee's video is a wake-up call for anyone intending to do their own exploration or even ghost hunts. Abandoned buildings pose all sorts of hazards, mostly from the decaying condition of the structures posing physical hazards. What is often overlooked is the possibility possibilities of others in the building who could potentially be living there or committing unsavory deeds away from prying eyes. Both Dee and Jonathan were justified in their suspicion of each other and on this occasion were able to laugh it off and even continue to explore the building together. It is likely this made the adventure safe as the two would now be able to look out for one another in case an accident occurred. It goes as a reminder to how the paranormal is not the only thing to be afraid of on these tours. Dee was definitely thanking his lucky stars he stumbled across Jonathan as both explorers decided to head into the basement as Dee felt it was better to have company. Down there, they find spray cans, a piece of a bicycle body, and a package. However, down a deep corridor, D finds a bone. While it could be misinterpreted for human, Jonathan points out it doesn't appear to be. On analysis, it more so resembles one someone would give their dog to chew on. Regardless, D decides to leave the bone there. Certainly an adrenaline inducing adventure this time. And thankfully, D made a new friend to explore with. Still goes to show how careful one must be about the place they explore, as well as who might be in it. If there was a soundtrack to your nightmares, it would probably sound like this. Posted to TikTok by Hannah Hallett, she writes simply, um, help? You'd be seeking help too if this Yankee Doodle was blaring outside your window in the darkness of night. Hannah captures what looks like an ice cream truck making a U-turn on her road in the darkness. Well, that's a little odd considering the time of day, but not overly scary. The fact that the truck's haunting children's music is blaring from its speakers, even as darkness envelopes the night, is absolutely terrifying. Who is this ice cream man trying to attract? Imagine this nightmare fuel filtering into your subconscious as you fall off to sleep. Pretty sure nightmares would be a guarantee. Archie Dennis is the name of a Philadelphia man who lives in what he believes is an extremely haunted home. He and his family have been dealing with whatever's down there for more than seven years. It's all well documented on their YouTube channel. I encourage you to watch all the evidence for yourself. But for now, Chills has picked out some videos to help get you started. Ones that make me the most curious. This early encounter takes place on May 17th, 2013. Back when he was less used to it and more afraid. Arky is looking down the steps when something on his spirit box encourages him to go in there, followed by a mysterious phrase in another language that I need your help to translate. You are demon. You are a demon. Arky says down the steps. It sounds like a statement, but it's actually a question. Something he has always wanted to know. It never says anything back, but this time it does show a sign that yes, it is one indeed. Are you a demon? The light turns on behind him, even though he is nowhere near the switch, and it continues to do so as he films in stunned amazement. Who are you? Say your name. Suddenly, his cats rush up the steps like they are running away from something. Though I suspect they could have been chasing each other. He crosses the room at 1 minute and 48 seconds. The lights seem to move on their own while an orb also comes close. It can't be him moving the lights because one hand is on the camera and the other is flipping the switch to no avail. 
I was thinking that maybe somebody was controlling the real light switch from the other room. But at 1 minute and 58 seconds, the light seems to glow even brighter than before. And he sounds noticeably upset as he steps away. Oh man. His fear has probably emboldened the spirit and things have gone way too far if you ask me. He should leave it by now, but day after day, our key continues to ask the spirit if it was a demon whenever he thinks it's near, pestering it with the same question for weeks on end. Finally, on December 16th, 2014, it gives a clear response, and I'm talking more than a simple yes or no. The way it answers in a full sentence exactly 5 seconds after being asked is all about the paranormal proof I need to conclude this is real. But I haven't even shown you the weirdest video yet. By October 12th of 2019, the spirit has moved out of the basement and seems fixated with his children. The EMF meter is relatively normal until it passes over his crib, and I think we might be seeing a possession in real time. 2.9, that's for my baby. 3.7, 9, 4.0, 4.1, 4.2, 9, 9, oh man, this, this, this is incredible. And his newborn baby is not the only one affected. The spirit seems to hover around his daughter as well. The way it appears from behind, goes to the side, and then appears to admire her is going way too far if you ask me. I don't know why Arky hasn't moved out yet, but I suspect that he may be strangely obsessed with studying it, and at this point possibly even has become sentimental. Maybe it has gotten into his mind, much like it has his family, and convinced him to let it stay. This final CCTV video is when Arky gets all of the evidence that he needs. I don't know if this is editing or not, but one day he is organizing his closet when a shadow figure stands over him and makes him cower in fear. If this last video is real, which I think it could be given everything else that's happened, then I guess it proves talking to a demon for over 5 years is, in fact, going way too far. A user named Josiah Worley has some of the best paranormal evidence on TikTok of a ghost haunting his room on the attic floor. He's recording his game table after a card leaped off the deck, and soon a cup is moving by itself. Or more accurately, a ghost is moving the cup if you ask Josiah. He handles the cup immediately after and you can see there is no string. On another night with one hand on the camera and the other hand on the mattress, Josiah watches an object move by itself. Mom? And later it crawls across the floor. Bro. Are you good, bro? You good, bro? Do you see any strings? Did you guys see it move? There are no editing cuts when he walks up to the medicine bottle. This object moved on its own. This happens night after night until finally he tries to communicate with the ghost. He makes the mistake of acting annoyed, which I think ramps things up considerably. What's good? You're kind of making noises. You're kind of being really loud. It's really irritating. Okay. In my opinion, the ghost wants nothing more than to be acknowledged, but Josiah wants nothing more than to be left alone. It's a conflict that's bound to create paranormal tension in the long run. The paranormal activity doesn't stop and so he gets in the habit of recording his room all of the time. It's almost sunrise. Almost sunrise. What was that? Where'd that go? This ghost orb in particular curves around and appears in front of him when he wants to know what it is. The caption says maybe I should ignore it, but in my opinion that will only make things even more unpleasant for him in the long run. 
I think the ghost hates being ignored and is moving objects because it refuses to go unheard. I don't think it wants Josiah out of the apartment. When he says he's going to move out is when it becomes absolutely enraged. I'm gonna f end up leaving. If anything, it wants him to keep it company forever. Josiah decides to use a ghost hunting TikTok filter called the Reality Ripple to finally catch a ghost sighting on his phone camera. It isn't long before objects are moving on their own again, and the colors on his screen change to indicate a ghost is near. Do you guys hear that? No, 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 that, no, no, that doesn't make sense. No, stop. While looking at this still frame, gaze into the paranormal energy, you can see a yellow phantom figure reaching out. I've circled its head with long hair and pointed at its arm to help you better see it. The figure seems to be grabbing at the area where the object fell over. All of this creeps Josiah out badly enough to ask the ghost, point blank, to do something specific if he's safe. I got one question for you. Am I safe? If I am, then please knock over the cups. Oh, you, you saw that. A cup does not move by itself, but the ghost does push a bag off the table. This is definitely a reply, and I guess it means that he's not safe because it moves a different object than the one he asked it to. Ever since then, things have quieted down, so maybe Josiah just needed to ask for permission to live here, or maybe this strange and cryptic poltergeist is biding its time, letting him lower his guard before moving on to the next phase of his horrible haunting. A group of friends are recording themselves lifting weights and basically just joking around in a small gym. The situation suddenly becomes very serious when one of them leaves the room and then comes rushing back to bang on the glass for help. You say I ain't gonna pick you up. Four. No way. What? What the f is he? What is he? A tentacle like appendage seems to wrap around their friend's waist and pulls him away. The group goes outside and searches for their friend Nathan, but he has vanished. Then another friend goes missing too. There. Nathan, come on. I could count as one. Nathan! Ah! 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 The two survivors run back into the building to talk about what just happened. One of them is in complete denial and thinks that they are simply being pranked. They are talking about whether this is really happening or not, when suddenly their worst fears are confirmed. <laughs> You're not laughing at this? This is crazy! This is hilarious! That's nasty. Yeah, that's nasty. Well, there is a strong possibility that this could be CGI. The uploader has not come out and said that this was a short film, and said they insist it's real. Most of the people in the comments section agree that this is authentic, but I'd definitely like to hear what you think. Oftentimes, we see movements out of the corner of our eye, and we think we're imagining things. What if we aren't? Posted to the Ghosts subreddit by Kid Blast Double, this clip got Redditors up in arms. The video shows someone entering their backyard with their dog, but check out the fence beyond. A shadow figure can clearly be seen fleeting across the yard. It arrives behind the tree and doesn't move beyond. Apart from slightly peeking from around the tree, which can be seen on the close-up of the clip, the top comment was from redditor Dads for Sons, who said he'd watched the clip on repeat a million times, and his first reaction was, whoa, the slow-mo gives him the chills, he says. In response, redditor PaulVS88 points out that the OP, Big Pappy Thunder, said, honestly didn't think anyone would get it, or that it would somehow get nearly 7,000 upvotes, but here we are. Figured I'd bamboozle maybe five people, then take it down for a laugh. Redditors with a sense of humor had a laugh about about it. Tactius Kilgore writes, the shadow people have him and are in control of his Reddit account. There was one oddity in the video that was unedited, however, the thing peeking, but Thunder thinks that it was more likely a light from far away or from the yard behind than the shadow ghost that he'd edited into the footage. Still, this video will likely have you second guessing the next thing you see out of the corner of your eye. 
While staying at a hotel room in Ireland, Roisin O'Brien grabs her dad to show him something bizarre. A ghost is moving a cup on its own, she tells him. Of course, nothing happens and she looks like a total liar until suddenly. <laughs> That's freaky. The cup moves all by itself to the edge of the glass shelf and then stops. There is no string around it that I can see. And besides, she is holding her phone and her dad is sitting on the bed clear across the room with his back turned, so no one was messing with it. She resets it and as soon as she complains that it takes the ghost a long time, the cup moves instantly. Well, like it's taken ages for it to go. So let's just say there was string tied around the cup. Her father is now standing to the right of her, so if it was him, then the cup should pull to the right in his direction. Instead, it moves straight ahead and stops exactly on the edge of the shelf, same as before. The shelf is level and there is no moisture around the rim to make it slide like that. This is glass on glass, you can hear the friction. <laughs> She's right. The cup is moving on its own, maybe from a ghost. Indiana Jones' stunt show is a dramatic recreation of the movie performed in front of a live audience. During this part of the show, the main character is ordinarily supposed to outrace a giant prop boulder and barely escape. This is what happens instead. You can hear a terrified scream emerge from the crowd as the boulder goes off track and heads straight towards the audience. Watch this part and you can see how the boulder would have probably smashed into the front row had it not hit a hole in the stage and slowed down. I guess the real question with this video is how much does the fake boulder weigh? People have said everything from as much as 440 pounds to as little as 80 pounds, but no real sources have been verified. If only we knew how much the prop boulder weighed, we'd know how much danger the audience was actually in. Either way, this was not the last time that the Indiana Jones stage play would have problems. Many years later in 2009, an actor somehow tumbled to their doom during a rehearsal. This is part of his routine. He's doing a dive roll and I think he landed on his head. He's unconscious right now. He's unconscious. He's not breathing. Okay. Sadly, they did not pull through. Have you ever dreamt that you found someone in your bed? But when you pulled the covers away, there was no one there. Posted to the Chills Narrator subreddit by BobbyG01, the uploader writes, She plays this off as a joke, but I find it quite weird. The quite weird joke was posted to TikTok originally by TJY. In the video, she says she just came into her room and it literally looks like there's someone lying in her bed. She keeps saying ew as she approaches the thing, not knowing if indeed there is someone underneath. As she steps closer, ew, no, ew, ew. Oh my god, is there someone there? No. The hair stands up on the back of your neck. You prepare yourself to have something or someone jump out at you. But when she lifts the blanket, nothing is there. A wave of relief washes over you, and probably her too. Watching it again, it's very strange how a body appears to be lying under the blanket. And when she yanks it from her bed, it doesn't look thick enough to bunch up like that. Hmm. Redditor the classic Drew admits in the comments, If I saw that in real life, I would be so scared. Agreed, I probably wouldn't work up the nerve to approach it. Explore With Us is a YouTube channel that goes to abandoned areas to see what they can find. This was taken during their very first live stream when they were checking out a post office and a general store in the middle of an old ghost town. The rickety buildings look ready to collapse at any moment, but what's inside the buildings is not the strangest part of this video. About three and a half minutes into the stream, someone tries to make contact with the group. Should I answer that? Hello? Hello? 
No one is on the other side. All they hear is this strange noise. Obviously, this could just be a prank from one of the viewers, but I don't think their location was ever disclosed. Therefore, it could have just as easily been an old resident of this abandoned town. There's just no way to tell for sure. Also, pay attention and you'll see a faint red light in the distance. Hopefully, it was just a cell phone tower or something like that. But then again, there doesn't seem to be any other structures nearby, just darkness. Someone is watching you. Published to YouTube by Finders Beepers History Seekers in August of 2020. The channel writes, Matt and Andy are reunited in this week's Creepy Explorer, an abandoned care home that was shut down for reports of terrible living conditions. Although it was shut down, maybe something paranormal stuck around. About 20 minutes into the edited video, the pair are headed up the stairs when they see this. Panning up to the second level, a figure moves across the upper hallway in the darkness. Unbeknownst to Mike and Andy, the shadowy menace was clearly watching them. The pair calls out to the person but no answer. They consider backing down but they think there's someone on the bottom floor as well. They decide to take their chances upward, but when they head up there, they find there's no one on the landing. And in fact, that landing where the figure crossed over doesn't even lead to another room. There's no way out. Some in the comments think the figure was the spirit of a former patient or a staffer. Open Paranormal writes, I think you just caught some of the best paranormal activity I've ever seen. There's clearly no one around, but you could clearly see a shadow of someone up there. We'd have to agree, this one seems genuine. There are mysterious happenings that can be explained, and others to which there is no answer. Guess which one this mystery is? Posted to the Chills Narrator subreddit by EBB Puzzleheaded, and originally published to YouTube by Daniel Robb. In May of 2020, these screams in the Texan night sky are sure to set your hair on end. In the clip, the uploader explains that there's a sound in the distance, screaming that seems to be coming from the sky, and you can regularly hear the eerie screech off and on for nearly 8 minutes. The uploader Daniel Robb says this happened between 8.30 and 9.30 p.m. and that it sounded like a banshee, followed by several voices whooping. He says the sound filled the entire night sky. Others in the comments agree that it's demonic or banshee-esque, citing the end of times. Redditor I have no purpose in life notes that the screams occur alongside the lightning strikes and wonders if they might be interconnected. I guess we may never know the actual answer. There are some things that make you so nervous you can never unsee them. They remain on the backs of your eyelids when you go to sleep at night. This entry will make you stay out of the forest. Redditor Film Direction wrote, Aw man, Chills is gonna be all over this in his next video. And he's right, I am. Posted by Rabbit14k, this video of a so-called forest guard was captured in India. The clip shows a vehicle driving at night down a dirt road surrounded by forest. It must be drizzling as the windshield wipers are moving. Then up ahead in the middle of the road is a figure in white flowing robes. The figure's head is covered, and when we never see its face, as the vehicle backs up, the figure walks slowly and strangely off the path and into the trees. As the vehicle continues to reverse, it disappears, swallowed by the darkness. According to Redditor Vixen Ross, this might be a holy man or woman, as the Sri Sarada Devi wears similar robes to these worn by our forest guard. Others note that it's a bit on the dark side for a midnight stroll, even for a holy man. Did this video make the hair on your legs stand up? Did it give you chills? Did it make your nose start running? And what do you think? Is this human or a demon? YouTuber Memoria Sobre Natural INC believes they were guided to this location by something paranormal. And maybe that's true, but it doesn't seem to want to let him in.
Opa! Cara, que que é isso, mano? Cara, que que é isso? At first, it seems like something might just be pushed up against the door blocking it. But then you see movement. Watch the crack in the doorway. Olha isso, cara. Oh, dá uma olhada. Whatever's inside doesn't seem human. Ah, cara, você é louco? Eu juro que eu achei que eu tinha visto o um demônio aqui agora, a hora que eu fui abrir a porta. Ah, cara, meu coração foi a mil aqui, ó. Bom, pessoal, eu acho que... Phew, it's just a ball. Or is it? I think this horned beast is more demon than it appears. This old VHS footage was taken by construction workers during an interior renovation project in Corpus Christi, Texas. It's daytime and well lit, and the building still has a constant eerie vibe. They claim to have seen the ghost of a girl walking across the property, and the air grew cold around them, even though they are in the south. One of them records this mysterious noise coming from the hallway. It sounds like a moan from behind. Take a listen. He calls out for his friend Tom and picks up a strange whispering noise as he turns. Hey, Tom! He pauses outside of an especially dark room and feels watched by a presence within, a force that strips him of his bravery and leaves him small and vulnerable. He sees movements and bolts down the hall. I, got it, dog. I think I can see the outline of something in the corner here. When the room is brightened, could this be the ghost girl they were talking about? He decides to take one last look in the room and cautiously peeks inside. Rushing footsteps come from within and send him screaming off the job site. This video does not include a haunted Ouija board per se, but a woman named Carmela as she is being tormented by spirits unleashed from a Ouija board. Now she is being rushed to the hospital as she says strange and evil things, her face twisting as tightly as the muscles will allow. When the emergency medical technicians tell her to wake up, she sits up and an evil spirit appears to speak through her. Carmela lets her head drop back and begins to thrash back and forth while the spirit that's inside of her continues to say cryptic messages. The video is believed to come from Spain, but not much else is known. I highly doubt that this has been staged, because this looks like a real medical emergency, so she is probably either suffering from a delusion, or she really was ravaged by spirits. They say that you can become possessed if you do not properly banish the ghosts at the end of the Ouija board summoning, so maybe that's what happened to poor Carmela. What would you do if you got a gut feeling that someone was standing behind that shower curtain? Posted to the Chills Narrator subreddit, Lucky1196 writes, Don't know if this is real or not, but kinda creepy AF. The clip shows the homeowner approach his bathroom, clearly uncertain whether or not someone is hiding in their shower. Like a band-aid, the person yanks the shower curtain in one fell swoop, only to find no one there. But that's not where this ends. In that moment, the light above goes out, making him spring backward from the bathroom. He tries to light the switch several times, but the bathroom light doesn't turn back on. As the shop pulls back into the bathroom, peering closer at the medicine cabinet, the man enters, and the light above starts to flicker again, drawing his attention upward. That's when he captures this horrifying figure on camera. Oh, my God.
While most in the comments doubt this is real, some give it kudos and call it kinda a nightmare. But Redditor Dremrigo says it best, that one genuinely gave me chills, real or fake. Nadim Shah suspects he's caught some paranormal things on video when he goes exploring an abandoned building that is little more than pillars in the dark. He suspects a place this creepy has to be haunted and the ghost hunter's instincts are not wrong. We are looking for something we are looking for something we Two ghost sightings are enough for Nadim. He needs a paranormal encounter up close to be fully convinced. He follows the ghosts into the darkness for one final sighting. He's all alone when a slow moving shadow figure glides across the pillar without making a sound. It's not someone walking behind him either, because Nadim would already be blocking out the light himself. It's a real ghost sighting as far as I'm concerned. A paranormal entity, a moving shadow that deeply creeps him out and sends him on his way. Enough said. Some videos have the power to keep us up all night long. As we're drifting off to sleep, they enter into our subconscious, making us sit bolt upright. The fear is real. The fright. This was posted to Reddit with the uploader writing, My friend is security at the airport, and he saw this through the security cameras. The video shows an American Airlines desk with what appears to be a service door beside it. The airport looks empty. Perhaps the security footage was taken during closing hours. But if it's empty, what makes the door do this? The door swings open aggressively, with no one behind it. These types of doors are usually heavy and secure, and as Astral Cath explains in the comments, are often locked or require a manual code to open, so it's unclear how wind or something natural might have burst the door open like this. So what could it be? Theories in the comments range from a ghost running late for a flight to unequal air pressure. Redditor Steve Mage God points out that there's a slight shadow change before the door flings open. So as usually happens, we've got those who think this is paranormal activity on one side and the skeptics who suggest this could be readily explained on the other. Which side are you on? A YouTuber named Darren's Northern Life is doing some last minute hunting at the end of the season. He sees a parked truck early on and knows that other hunters must be around, which means everybody should be extra careful. A short while later, he finds himself in one of the worst situations a hunter could ever possibly imagine. Oh my goodness, that bullet just came over my head. Darren hears the shot whiz by his head and scrambles for cover behind some trees. The other hunters still haven't noticed they are firing on another person and seem to be out of shouting range. This, this guy's gonna f***ing kill me. Darren scrambles to safety and can't even believe what just happened. Later, he goes back to the truck and records their license plate. They just so happen to be coming back as well. Pictures of the license plate. Is something wrong? Everything all right? Uh, somebody shot at me. They claim it was a different person and not anyone in their party. Without any concrete evidence, I don't think there is much Darren can legally do besides upload the video and make the event public. Let me know if you think he has enough evidence to press charges based on what you've seen. Sensitive sensor lights can sense stuff invisible to the human eye. At least this one can. Posted to the Ghosts subreddit by Spread the Words, the Redditor shares that strange things have been occurring in his grandmother's house. One of these strange things involve orbs that seem to trigger the hallway sensor lights. This happened on more than one occasion. The short clip does show an orb rising into view, and instantly the hallway light turns on. Is this a paranormal event or merely a coincidence? Believers in the paranormal commonly think orbs are light energy that is somehow linked to the spirit world. Skeptics believe they're just air particles, dust, water, or other types of photography backscatter. But how do you explain dust triggering a light sensor? While there are plenty of skeptics in the comments saying this orb is just dust, 
Others are prone to think otherwise. How would Dust turn on a light? A narrow knot 369 writes that he would assume it was dust if the motion light wasn't triggered by it. But every time the orb appears, the light turns on. Others observe that if the light sensor was sensitive enough to be triggered by dust, wouldn't the light always be on? Whose side are you on? Is there a giant panda lurking nearby? Posted to the ghost's subreddit, Flower Sliders writes, Took a walk on an abandoned road in rural Japan. Saw this. Not sure what to make of it. Local friends said he'd never seen anything like it before. The video shows a thick stalk of bamboo shaking dramatically, amongst other bamboo stalks. Okay, that's weird, right? Why is it moving? Yeah. Can we even go? Why is it doing that? You guys not see that down there? What? Right Shut there. Up. I'm not gonna have a look. There's nothing. Okay, why is it still moving? The rest of the stalks are still, so what is causing this one to shake? Some in the comments think it's the Kadama, spirits in Japanese folklore that inhabit trees. Others think it could be an animal feasting on its roots or burrowing beneath the stalk. Spirits or not, it sure looks creepy. And to think before watching this video, a walk in rural Japan seems so peaceful to me. I'm gonna look this up. Oh, oh, maybe there's something. Wait. Yeah, it's still, no, it's not. It's, it's cut there, so they shouldn't be. If you like to scrounge for snacks at night, this video will have you second guessing that midnight snack. Posted to Reddit by Better Than Better, the home security footage reveals a dark and seemingly empty kitchen at night. Around 30 seconds in, a man trudges in and opens the fridge to get a snack. While the man is standing at the fridge, drinking something, watch the teddy bear on the kitchen table. It starts moving ever so slightly, bobbing up and down, but that's not all. When the man closes the fridge and turns to leave, the baby walker next to the table does this, confused about whether he saw what he thinks he saw. The man doesn't take his eyes off the baby walker as he leaves the room, but he returns a short time later, his wife by his side, presumably to explain what happened. As he's indicating that the baby walker moved of its own accord, the teddy bear falls over, or rather seems to fly backwards. As the wife jumps out of the room and the man approaches the bear, two of the chairs tucked under the table spring out simultaneously. If that isn't enough to scare you out of your own home, I don't know what is. I believe dealing with an incident like this is something 99% of people couldn't handle. A YouTuber named Jerry Wells and a housemate sit across from each other while playing with a Ouija board. Apparently, they have been experiencing strange paranormal disturbances around the home for some time, and now they're turning to the Ouija board for answers. We're going to try to find out what's in this house. I don't know how else to try to contact it. We've got to find out what it wants. I'm going to see if I can get it to leave us alone. Look closely, and you can see the board quivering unnaturally as they speak. Or tell us what you want, what it'll take to leave me and my family and our home alone and never return. We're tired of this. Just tell us what you want." Jerry Wells asks what it wants, and B-L-O-O-D is the reply, followed by a metaphysical reaction. What do you mean, blood? What do you want? <laughs> Come on now. Oh my god, Tommy! Son of a... <laughs> if this is fake, then I have no idea how they did this. You can clearly see underneath the table the entire time, so it's not magnets, and I don't see a string either. If you don't believe this is paranormal, then let me know how they managed to make the board shake and jump straight into the air. Buckle your seatbelts. Posted to the Chills Narrator subreddit, this video is apparently forbidden in most countries, and it's clear why. The footage shows two lit up objects in the sky. They're both moving slightly, with one of them moving a bit faster than the other and in different directions. The lights blink as the unidentified flying device on the bottom moves up towards the one above it. Suddenly, they fuse and it sends a shockwave through the sky, like a bolt of lightning. What in the heck just happened here? The uploader stumbled across the freaky forbidden video in the summer of 2018. 
Some think it's most likely a clip from an indie movie. Redditor the lovely Raven 313 points out, if this actually happened, the media would be on it. Many agree with this sentiment. While well, some are willing to suspend their disbelief when asked what it is, the Redditor admits he doesn't know. That's why I'm posting this to try and solve the mystery, he writes. Can you solve the mystery? I'm at a loss here. Most bad guys see a security camera and think twice, but Jason Chekhov thinks that this one was attracted to his house specifically because of it, which he can get some money for if he can manage to get away. There's no doubt that he stops and looks directly at the camera at 9 seconds into the video. It's such an abrupt and dramatic turn that some people think the whole thing is fake and that this person whose face is fully covered is none other than Jason Chekhov himself trying to get some views. I would agree that this could be a possibility if not for the lengths of which the person is willing to go through to get inside. First they put one arm under the other and try to wedge it open with force. Then they just try to open it the good old fashioned way and give the glass three solid elbows. Finally, they try to simply pinch and lift, painfully snapping back their fingernail from the sound of it. The point is, I really doubt Jason Chekhov would have risked messing up his windows or his fingers trying to break his way in, though I could be wrong. Is that, dude? <laughs> a single strange light in the sky has a YouTuber named Jesse Table Beast looking up with curiosity and horror. Yeah, it's definitely fine, whatever it is. He and his friend decide to drive towards this strange blinking light and investigate what it could be. The still image taken at 4 minutes and 58 seconds gives us a better look at it. A disc-like object floating in the air. There's an intense light coming from the bottom and also a small circular dome on top. They don't know what it is and neither does anyone else. A minute later, they are at the source of the light, which is much larger now but still just as unexplained. They think the light is coming from a nearby power plant, but it's too dark and rainy to tell, so they go home without knowing for certain. This light, well bizarre, might be from a busted power generator, but if that were the case then you'd think the light would be low to the ground and constant. The light is high in the air. Tell me what you think it is. Ring doorbells seem to capture more than you were bargaining for. Posted to the Ghosts subreddit by Yakuza Disco Man. This redditor is wondering if what he's caught on his ring doorbell is paranormal. The security camera shows a wide shot of a street outside his home with several parked cars along it. Nothing unusual that is, until this ghostly figure streams past in the darkness. The semi-transparent phantom appears like he's trailing fog. Is this a spirit on a nighttime stroll? Redditor Noobvin rains on our ghost hunting parade writing. This is a camera glitch due to low lighting, and the way the ring camera saves space with video and images, it's looking for pixel changes, and with low light, it is only detecting a fraction of the actual image, which makes the image appear transparent, noting that it's not really a glitch per se, but rather the design of the camera in order to reduce high bandwidth. Noobvin is pretty sure it's not a ghost. Others suggested that the Redditor reenact the event under these same conditions to see if he can replicate this. Let's hope he does. Better safe than sorry. Nevertheless, I genuinely think this footage is creepy. Jay Duncan is at home with his wife and daughter. When he looks out his door and sees a total stranger in rough shape, the man is having a fast-paced conversation with no one but himself, and he can't hold still for a single second. He's just out there, man. He just won't go away. When he finally notices Jay a full minute later, his first move is to immediately try the door. I can only imagine what this intruder would have done next had he gotten inside. Instead, he throws his hands up in exasperation, as if they have no right to keep their front door locked. He barks a series of threats and demands to be let in. I think he basically says he's through playing games with them, whatever that means. <laughs> They snicker at him through the door until he gives up and gets into a relatively upscale truck to leave. 
Obviously, if he has a truck, then he also has a warm place to stay, which makes me wonder why he wanted to get into Jay Duncan's home to begin with. I think that maybe this person might have been out of their mind and thought they were outside of their own home. If so, I really hope they don't come back when Jay Duncan is asleep at night and try the same again. I know. Look, that's actually so creepy, dude. There's a guy right there, and I'm kind of freaked out, not gonna lie. Blake Gray fears he's captured, something that would terrify all of us behind the dumpster of an abandoned building while exploring. His brave friend slowly creeps up. So obviously, this was a skit that was pre-planned, right? Wrong. Let's analyze what they were wearing on the day they captured this mysterious figure. Ripped jeans, skinny jeans, blue jean shorts. The mysterious stranger is wearing khakis. So yeah, this creepy event is scary and most importantly, could be real. The person is still alive, but to what degree is unknown. A twitch of the leg could mean asleep or barely alive. If this is real, then I hope they notified the proper authorities to come make sure whoever this is is still alive. This orphanage turned satanic church holds a lot of secrets. The team was lured to the place after seeing a shadow figure in footage captured by urban explorers in the building. Watch the dark passage. You saw a shadow figure in that video and uh, you sent it over to me and I was like, no doubt that that's a shadow figure. So we definitely know that shadow figures are here roaming about. But also another thing is... Um now it's Ghost Club Paranormal's turn to find the truth. Upon entering the haunted cult house, they discover some disturbing imagery. Like literally, I'm not. Be careful! Just... Don't be around that. I think that's from people shooting. <laughs> when they pull out their EMF meter, they get a jumpy reading. We are getting. <laughs> I literally okay. I mean, for a building with absolutely zero electricity that makes no sense if there's anybody they also capture an evp yes. 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 later their rem pod is triggered kidding me and shortly after what sounds like footsteps are heard Hey, Cam. I just heard footsteps right behind me. Then they get a clear answer from the spirits. We need to make clear contact with you right now if you're here with us. If you want to communicate with us, that's what we need from you. Oh my god, it's going off, it's going off. Shine your light up there. It's cool. And it's not long before they see them too. Watch the shadows in the hallway beyond. It's totally fine talking to us as well. Talking to us as well. Do you see the shape-shifting shadow whip through? I sure did. After that, the crew is given the fright of their lives. Just in case something does happen. Wow. Okay. Okay. I am definitely feeling the terrifying energy in this house, but whether it's the young ghost congregant or Satan himself is anyone's guess. Is there a ghost at this military base? Posted to the paranormal subreddit by Multifrapser. This creepy sound clip was captured in a base for the Finnish Defense Forces.
The Redditor explains that the video was cut out of the clip for security reasons, but that it was recorded near a public road at around 10.30 p.m. in January of 2020. Though it's short, he said the sound continued for 45 minutes until 11.15 p.m. The Redditor writes, During the time I captured this clip, I'd kept watch at one of the checkpoints that led to the military base or garrison. He explains that the noise started to get quieter little by little until it vanished. Another military personnel had heard the same noises the night before around midnight. He also describes the base's surroundings. There is a town about 1.5 kilometers away that turns into a veritable ghost town around this time. There are also a central fire station in rural industries nearby, as well as a railroad track, but only one rail line is scheduled to pass there at a specific time and doesn't make this noise. On the opposite side of the base is a small bay, with only motor and sailboats that don't usually operate at this time of day or year. Across from the base is a water tower made of concrete, which is where he thinks the noise may be coming from, though he had never heard this sound before. He describes the surroundings that night as not windy. There are many different theories in the comments as to the source of this noise, with some suggesting it could be the mysterious sky trumpets that have been captured all over the world. Others suggest coronal mass ejections in the ionosphere, which have to do with the aurora borealis. It could also be singing ice, which is a sound effect that happens when frozen soil or rock cracks after water seeps in and freezes. Some also think the rhythmic oscillation sounds mechanical or like breathing, but Redditor PaulJS75 believes that the Redditor might be on the right track with the water tower theory writing. Keep in mind when draining or filling the thing, there also has to be a way for air to get in or out. A lot of air rushing through a passage is going to make noise. What do you think this is? Do you have any other theories? I think no matter what the cause is, this would be terrifying to hear outside at night while being alone. Thank you.